everybody, to this JMC 2021 Minnesota State Reporting Roundup. Welcome. We're glad to have you. Thank you so much for joining us for our Minnesota State Reporting Roundup. We're so excited that you could join us today as we are taking a look at getting ready for state reporting at the beginning of the year and explore reporting through the rest of the school year. We'll review the rest of the year process and take a peek at new features sprinkled throughout. Let's get started. We've got a great state reporting team today. My name is Paul Freed. I am the head of training here at JMC, and I have over 20 years of educational experiences. I was a teacher in the great state of Minnesota, and um, I've been doing other teaching things, and also been with JMC for, gosh, I think about 15 years now as, uh, as well. And I'm joined by Brett Joyce, head of client services at JMC, former teacher, principal, and superintendent as well. So Brett, you want to stay, say hello? You bet, uh, Paul. Thanks. Yeah, good to be with today. And Brett, where were you? Um, where were you? Uh, where did you first teach? I don't think I've ever asked that question. Uh, I started my teaching career my all nine years, actually, my teaching career at Stuartville High School. Awesome. And where did you go to high school, actually? I went to Bemidji High School. Oh, I'm a lumberjack. Gotcha. So you transferred. You were up. That's where you're from. Is up north, north central yep. Minnesota. And then did did Stuartville bring you down to south eastern Minnesota, and that's where you stayed. Yeah, I got, since I grew up on a lake, I got sentenced to the only county in the whole state that doesn't have a lake. Which county is that? <laughs> I think it's Olmstead. Really? Yeah. I can imagine. I can imagine. But they've got a good swimming hole at uh, in Rochester there. At, oh, yeah. Uh, they dug, the they dug a hole and water filled right. in. Yeah. That's right. Absolutely. The same. That you're, I will tell you, it's not exactly a lake. That's for sure. So uh, glad to have you. We also have some great folks from the Minnesota Department of Education joining us today as well. Um, they're going to be, uh, I'm asking them to, to chime in. Uh, during any part or especially the Q&A time, right? Because this is a collaborative effort, right? Where we come together and we want to make all of us, right? At JMC, our programmers, training team, tech support team, and also the the, um, the Minnesota Department of Education team, we all want our schools to be successful. And so we collaborate on this presentation today where I'm going to go through and show kind of some things from what we call the JMC perspective. And again, the, the MDE folks, you can chime in at any time if you want to make clarifications, help answer questions. And then they're going to take some time at the end of the presentation as well. But we've got Gyra and Jean and Jeff and Karen with us today as well. And so I'm um, glad to have all you folks. They'll have a chance to, I won't have them introduce themselves now. Maybe you can introduce yourself briefly at the end when it, when it comes in. Um, and we'll, we'll gotten to go from there just to kind of get right into it. Because we actually have a full couple hours, uh, I think, planned uh, for our presentation. So we're going to get right into it. But I, I do want to say now, and I'll say it again, uh, Gyra, Jean, Jeff, Karen, thanks for being part of this. I really appreciate it because I know that you all you folks are busy as well. So why a state reporting roundup? Why are we here? For 40 years, JMC Software has helped schools run more efficiently. We've grown and innovated, but our goal has never changed to empower schools through technology so they can focus on what matters most, student success. Today, we'll show you JMC's state reporting feature reporting module, take a closer look at new features, and hear from the State Department of Education there as well. So we're good to go there as well. Oh, I also want to say Marilyn is on here as well. So thank you to Marilyn for joining us. So I don't want to forget about anybody. It's uh, been a busy day of training. So we got that whole crew here as well. We got some powerhouses here, Brett. I appreciate it. All right, here's the agenda. We're going to first do a state reporting overview, talk about staying our calendar, val validating state IDs, importing enrollment history for the prior year, Mars settings, managing Minnesota enrollment, fall submissions, what's new, and we'll hear from the Minnesota Department of Education and then do a wrap up and thank you. Now, I also wanna tell folks that we are having separate trainings on the Minnesota EdFi transition. We just had our first session and Q&A session I think it was last Monday and Thursday, really well attended. It went great. I've got those videos on our YouTube channel. Also, when I send out the copy of this video um, and the, the slides to all the people who are registered for this presentation, I will include links to all the rest of our Minnesota EdFi onboarding presentation. So I'm guessing, I don't know for sure that the, that the MDE folks might touch base on that briefly, um, but we're not going to be talking about EdFi today, the transition, because we always tell folks, what's the first thing to do when you do EdFi? It's to make sure that you have your bars files ready to go and error free. So that's what this presentation is about. We will discuss EdFi a little bit at the end. Uh, but we want you to get this first. Don't put the cart before the horse. Make sure that you know how to do your Mars reporting first is how we definitely will look at that. And now on with the show. But wait, what if you have a question? JMC Client Service Specialists are standing by ready to answer your questions. Simply use the Q&A chat feature in your webinar toolbar anytime you see a question slide. Typically, these pop up at the end, excuse me, of each of a section or session as well. 
and then Brett will help us manage those as well. All right, first off, state reporting overview. MARS is a system by which students, uh, which districts and charter schools report student data to the Minnesota Department of Education, MDE. <clears throat> the Minnesota Automated Reporting Student System, MARS, that's a little fun fact for you there today in case you didn't know, collects data required by multiple areas of MDE with one system for levy allocations, state aid, federal grant allocations, and federal and state reports. The Minnesota users have a succinct list of tasks to perform in order to fulfill yearly MARS duties. To complete your requirements, you'll need to set up your school year calendar, ensure all students have state IDs, import status from last end of year, managing enrollment throughout the year, create A and B files <coughs> and end of year files, and upload files to the Minnesota Department of Education. So first thing is setting your calendar in James C. Really important to do. We've revamped the process of entering term dates and special day names in JMC office by reducing the amount of information you need to enter and by creating a new calendar view. Today, we'll dig into setting days at the district level and setting term dates and special days at the building level. You absolutely need to do this. This is, if you haven't done this already, this is step one when we're done because you want to do this to make sure that your calendar is set up correctly. You'll find it under attendance, calendar, days in JMC office, attendance, calendar, days in JMC office, both at the building level and the district level. Accurate data comes from an up-to-date school calendar. Setting your calendar in JMC is the first step in your attendance being calculated for you. Let's start at the district level for start and end dates and then move to buildings for special days and term dates. Step one, select the first day of school and the last day of school using the appropriate drop down lists up here, really easy to do. Click save button to save your first and last day of school. Could be easier. Now, this is at the district level. You'll double click, this is step three. Double click the gray bar on a district wide no school day to indicate there is no school for the entire day for that particular state, particular date. Helpful tip, if it's a partial day, double click again to cycle through the option. So it'll start as blank, normal school day. I double click, 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 it'll be no school for the entire day. Click, double click again, click, click, no school for the morning. And then double click again, click, click, no school for the PM. If I double click again, it takes me back to blank, which is a normal school day. Term dates refer to the days that grading terms in the school year are set to begin or end. Since different buildings can have different grading schemes, you'll need to set the terms for each building. So this is not done at the district. This is done for each building. First, you'll come in, same place, attendance, calendar days. Select the term dates radio button to enter, to be able to enter and edit term dates. Then just like before, you'll double click on the gray bar of the day that represents either the start or end of a term to open the grading term window. So you'll double click on that, that opens this window right here. Now what you do is you place a check mark in the term type your school uses in the appropriate checkbox. So I said here quarter one end is on 10-29-2021 there. Helpful tip, JMC sets start and end dates for your term based on the first and last day selections. Step four, click the save button if you wanna save it or close if you don't wanna save it. Now, special days are days that select grade levels are not in school. For example, your senior class may not have school the last few days while all other grade levels are in session. Begin setting these non-instructional days at the building level. Again, we're at the building level. So we set our term dates. Now we're gonna set the special days. Click the grades drop down list to set a non instructional day for a specific grade level. Uh, you also can leave it at all grades because let's say the high school doesn't have school a day that the elementary does. You can do it for all grades, but it's easier to do it like for kindergarten here. Then step two, double click the, or excuse me, click the grades drop down list to set a non instructional day for the specific grade. And then you'll double click the gray bar on the special day to indicate the grade level not in school for that date. So this is really easy to do. I would probably just do it all at once is what I would do is if I was uh, folks, because that way you don't have to, um, that way you don't have to like just mess with, futz it, futz with it is what my dad would say throughout the year. So first thing I do is I'm gonna go under the district level. I'm gonna go under attendance, calendar, todays. And I've already done this. Set your first day of school, set your last day of school, and then click save really easy to do at the district level. I mean, could not be easier. Then we'll switch our building. To, I've got two schools here. So let's say I'm gonna to go to the elementary school. Now at the elementary school, here's the first day of school is the seventh here. Now we have a district-wide day here uh, of no school on the 10th, okay? So now what we're gonna do is I'm first gonna set my term dates in here. So let's go to term dates and I'm gonna come and my year start, sem one and quarter one start is automatically defaulted here because we assume, and you could change it if you needed to, but we assume by, and I'm gonna double click on here, that whatever the first day of school is gonna be these term date starts for you. 
Okay, so now I want to go to the end of my quarter one. Okay, let's see here. So I'm going to go, here's October. Oh, I've got that down here. So here's my end of quarter one and then my end of quarter two. So let's go find another one here. There's semester one. Let's go a little bit lower there. There we go. Let's actually take these out because I uh, was using this to practice to, um, to get ready here. Okay, so we come in here. If I go back to December, here's my SEM one end and quarter two end. All right, that means in January, I'm gonna have a SEM two start and a quarter two start. So we're gonna say, all right, January 3rd, I'm gonna double click, click, click. This is going to be my quarter three start. And it's nice because we list the dates in there for you. So say, oh, yeah, I'm on the quarter three start. And we tell you what the date is here, 1, 3, 2022 quarter three start and my SEM two start and click save. And that's all there is to it. So really easy to do. So that's my term dates needs to be set for each building. Now, if I go to special days, I'm back, it defaults back to the first day of school. Let's say that my kindergartners don't go to school the first week. They start on the 13th. I come here to all grades, choose my kindergarten group or grade zero, whichever you want. I'm going to click here, click, click. That's where I can no school day there. Click, click, no school day there. So now if I come back to attendance calendar days, I'm gonna come back here, it defaults to all grades here. It's gonna tell me that it varies by grade level, telling me this is a no school district day, but I've got some differences here in the varies by grade level. So really easy way to be able to, to come in, manage your calendar. And I, the thing I actually like about it a lot as well is that it's easy to change, right? So you, you um, if you have a snow day, you can easily come in and mark a school a no school day. And other states that do EdFi reporting, um, you know, we, we encourage them. As soon as you have a no school day and you send out that voice message that says no school day, come in here and adjust your calendar because that, that information is reported to the state. Okay, so here we go. All right, so here's some key takeaways and then I'll get to my question and answer slide where people can type in questions. Resource available, use the JMC's in-app help widget integrated right into each page to find step-by-step -step instructions on setting your school calendar for the year. Great feature alert with just a double click here and there, you can have your district calendar set up and ready to go. Planning tip, pull all those district administrators together to complete your terms in a snap. So I said, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it month by month. I would do it for the whole year and then adjust if needed there is, is what I would do. Um, but just take care of it all at once instead of trying to like piecemeal it together. So. The floor is yours. See if anybody has any questions that are, that are listed here as well. Um, the, the calendar item is also on the starting the school year checklist, right? So it's easy to be able to, to, um, to, to use that. So uh, Brett, have you done any setting up of calendars yet? Did you, have you done that process? Yeah, yeah, Paul, I've, I've uh, definitely set up 21-22. Not, it's not a hard process, is it? No, it's really easy. Programmers made it super easy at JMC to do that. Absolutely. Okay. Well, I don't see any questions in there. Nope, we're good, Paul. Okay, so here we go. Validating state IDs. So the Minnesota Department of Public Instruction assigns a student ID to every student as their primary means of identification for state reporting purposes. MARS IDs are found on the website Department of Education website, which when you get this presentation, you'll be able to go here and click on this. It will take you out to that site. Once you've entered student MARS IDs in JMC office, there's an easy process called validating student IDs to ensure all of your MARS IDs are correct. So in essence, what we're saying is you can go out to the, the uh, MDE website and generate or find state IDs. And then you put them on the view student data screen, which is pretty straightforward. But if you wanna validate them, here's the process you can follow. So we'll go to Minnesota Mars student state IDs, SSID file. So Minnesota Mars student state IDs, SSID file. So the process to validate Mars IDs through the Minnesota Department of Education is started by exporting a file from, the, uh, from JMC. The file export can then be uploaded to the Minnesota Department of Education's website for verification of student state IDs. All right, create a file for all students at one time or one grade level at a time to create the file export and upload it to the Minnesota Department of Education. In JMC office, visit Minnesota Mars student state IDs SSID file. Step one, select the students for the specific grade level using the select a grade level dropdown list. Step two, click the check errors button to complete an error check before you create your file export. Step three, click the create file button to create the file export and save it to your computer after all errors have been corrected. Helpful tip, upload this file to the Minnesota Department of Education through their 
site. Now, I, I want to highlight that you, you, after you check those errors, if there's anything listed there, you need to fix those errors before you would create that file. So this, again, is really easy to do here. We'll go here to back to my home screen. Minnesota, student state IDs, student state ID file, and check for errors here. Okay, Isaac Asimov has no birth date in the spec specified student data. So I'd come here, I could right click, open that in a new tab here. We'll find Isaac Asimov here. I S A, uh, I spell that Isaac here. I S A A C here. Oh, I'm in my fourth grade here. So let's go back to all my active kids. There we go. I S A A. There's Isaac Asimov. And you're like that, he's got no birth date. So we'll put it in here and he's a kindergartner. So we'll put down 2015, save that. So I come back here and I check for errors, right? That error is gone. I could now create that file there. So really easy to be able to come in and use that information there. So here we go. Floor is yours. Let's see if there's any questions, Brett, that came up about this or maybe it's one somebody snuck one in about the calendar. Yeah, Paul, we have two here. Um, Person uh, Jody says she has three different buildings, one being an ALP. How do we set the summer calendar? Um, the I'm not sure. You might have to contact tech support about that, but you have to the district. The way I, my understanding is, and I would contact tech support to make sure because I know that this was a this was something that they worked with last year, and I don't remember the landed, but I think that you set, you set the district level at um, the start and end date, whatever the earliest date is, right? So if let's say the, uh, the ELP or ALP starts on, I'm just making this up, August 1st, but the rest of the school starts on August, September 1st. You would go in at, the dist at, at that building level and you would mark those days as being no school in August for the high school and the elementary and the ELP you would, you would leave there so that the really the start date for quarter one and SEM one would be September 1st. So, but you do have to set the district date as the earliest date there's school, then use the buildings to manage which days there's no school. And then you'll go ahead and set that start date there. So it allows you to, it's a little work, right? You gotta double click some of those days, but that's why we have the all grade levels there, right? So if I came in here and I was at my district level building here, and I came to um, attendance calendar. Uh, actually, I wouldn't go to the district, excuse me. I'd come to my building, right? So the high school starts later than the, the ALP. I'd come to attendance calendar days. And I'd say, hey, it doesn't start here. I would actually go in for all grades in my high school and say, no school, 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 no school. And then I would go to, that, that's my August. So then I would come to this, whatever day this is and say, all right, this is my first day of school here. And I would check that term date to say, that's my SEM one and quarter one start. But I would shoot a quick email to tech support just to make sure, but I'm pretty sure that way it's done. The reason I say that is because I've done four state reportings here now, Brett, and sometimes it, it, different states handle it differently. So I, that's why I always want you to double check there. But great question. Perfect, Paul. That actually answered you. That was a twofer. You got- I like, the, I like the twofers. Is there another question there? Yeah. Um, do you have to do this for ESY too? Well, you know, ESY is- um, um, is you actually, technically you don't need to have an extra building for ESY. Um, and again, I don't deal with that that much. Our tech support does more of that because you can add in a Mars status line for ESY. But um, uh, let me think here. So if you have an extra building for ESY, um, you'd wanna make sure that the dates are accounted for. But again, you don't have to do ESY. So that's why I recommend people do ESY just in their regular building as an extra Mars data line. And I don't mean to have you email tech support to find that out, but I would email them just to make sure there as well. Um, uh, yeah, because the ESY I'm more unsure of there if you're because you're doing it not the way that I typically do it there. Great, Paul, that's it for now. Great. All right, so here we go. And if anybody from the MDE has anything they want to add about that, they sure can. Because again, Gyra, Tara, Jean, Marilyn, Jeff, Karen, if you guys want to add things in, you sure can go ahead and add items in there as well. Is there another question, uh, uh, Brett, or should I keep rolling? One just popped in here. Okay. Um, how do you add the Mars status line? We're going to talk about that. Great question. 
that's actually some slides that we're going to go through. So you can just say we'll answer that one live when that comes up when we talk about managing student enrollment. Great. All Great right. Call. Yeah. All right. Important enrollment history from the prior year. Where to find important enrollment history under Minnesota Mars update status from last EOI. Minnesota Mars update status from last EOI. JMC makes importing enrollment history easy by streamlining this process with just one click. In JMC office head to Minnesota Mars update status from last EOI to start the process of updating your enrollment history for your students. Step one, click the import, uh, uh, no, actually click the, now it's proceed to update students button. We actually updated that button this year, uh, button to start that helpful tip. If you'd like a hard copy to edit your enrollment history, click the print import summary button when it's done. So when I click this, it will just go in and update the status from the last end of year. That's a brand new button update there. So I like that. This has to be done, right? You, you, you do not wanna do that. And so a common question we get from folks is, uh, if they haven't done this, is I, my, um, my county code is not listed, right? So if there's different codes that are not in there for students, then you wanna make sure that you have done this. So go to Minnesota and then, oh, I got thrown off there a little bit, Mars. Here we go, update status from last end of year. And we tell you what it does right here. This process updates or overwrites the existing Mars 21-22 status line for each student with the most recent information from the end of the 2021 school year. This is typically used before making edits to 21-22. If you haven't done this, you want to do this now. The process will only update Mars data for the current building. This process can be run uh, more than once per building. However, it may overwrite any manual changes you made to student Mars records for this year. So, and if somebody says to me, well, I already updated a few kids Mars records, I would say that's, I would, I would, I would update that anyways. You could print off a drop ad list if you wanted to whatever, because this is updating all your students, not just a few. We did add in the details about Mars data from prior year quick link to tell you this is what it updates the district type homebound independent study primary disability pseo state aid category so the reason we tell you this is that if you say none of my kids have that's what it is district type right or my kids don't have their primary disability listed that means you haven't done this process yet and you want to make sure to do that also this process will uncheck the active attend and include for mars for students who are dropped at the end of the prior school year as well so if the question comes in, well, I've already done some edits to kids, what should I do? I would update, I would make notes to the kids that you made edits to. I would then come in here, I would proceed to update your students. And then um, I would go back and then make those edits again, because it's gonna save you a lot of time. If not, you gotta go to each kid and update for any kids that have it, this status information that's listed here. Okay. And if you were a school that was brand new to JMC, of course, you wouldn't do that because there's nothing to update from the previous year. All right, well, we'll take questions in just a moment here. So resource update, need some additional training? JMC representatives can join you for a training webinar whenever you need it. Email training at jmcins.com to learn more. Key idea, update status from last end of year is typically done in early August right now and imports much of your Mars student status data from the last day of the school in the previous school year. And who's in charge of maintaining the Mars IDs in the JMC office? They can start to use the student Mars ID validation process and validate students who transfer into your school over the summer. So, all right, we're back to our Q&A slide here. Brett, and they're, the, the, the phones are heating up, right? They sure are, Paul. Here we go. Uh, Patty asks, at one time, MDE wanted us to set up an ESY building. Now we should not have an ESY building. I am confused on this issue. Well, that's you can set up an ESY building. I'm not saying that you can't do that. But JMC last year, and we talked about this at, our, at the last year one, not that, that you need to know every single you know item that comes in, but um, it, we added in the ability to add in a Mars status line for a different building. That, that's the key. So because you can now add in a Mars status line for a different building, if I'm remembering correctly, you can now add in that ESY record of the main building. But if you have an ESY building, that's no problem whatsoever. You can still use it. Absolutely, if that makes sense to you, I would still continue to use the ESY building. I've got no problem with that whatsoever. My question is, because I haven't thought about ESY in view of the calendar, that if you have an ESY building, just shoot a quick email to tech support and say, hey, how do I, if, you're, if the calendar dates are different, right? If your calendar dates for ESY are the same as the regular school, um, then you have no problem there. But if you have questions about that, just shoot a quick email to tech support and say, hey, I've got an ESY building. That's where we're tracking ESY. But uh, I'm unsure about how that affects the calendar setup and that will help you take care of that. So both work, no problem whatsoever. We just added that feature in um, last year. 
Great question. Okay, Paul. Um, another one here is, is this step on the start of the school checklist? And I think you've already addressed that. Yes. Yeah, I think it is. On, I think it is there. Let's go check and see. Uh, I'm almost certain that is. The start of the school checklist is under file. Start of school year checklist. It's a great feature that we did a webinar on down to state reporting. And um, there it is. Minnesota Mars update status from last end of year. If I check that, it actually takes me to that screen and I can proceed to update those students there. Then when you're done, I go back under file to start a school year checklist and click the checkbox there. And that will check off that you've done that and it complete the steps to ensure states have IDs. We talked about that. And Minnesota Ed Fi folks only prefer to start year. That's gonna be part of our Ed Fi training. That checks it off for you on that state reporting checkbox. So great question. Great, Paul, that's it for now. All right, great questions, folks. And I keep them coming in. MDE, did anyone want to unmute themselves if they have things to add about that? They sure can, like I said, at any moment, at a moment's notice. All right, here we go. Um, Paul, Yeah. I just want to emphasize again the uh, question from Christina, the early childhood screening is not a good time to be assigning the state student ID. That was an old process. Now with EE student enrollment, ECSC funding, MCCC reporting, state student IDs need to be assigned way before the early childhood screening. So that process is that that's uh, it was a good spot many years ago. That is no longer a great um, uh, benchmark anymore. All right. Can you sum that up again one more time? Does that sound good? So you're talking about? Can you say that one more time? Is that all right? Because I didn't see the yeah, question. So Christina uh, asked our Mars. Um, IDs assigned to a student at their early childhood screening. Okay. And that was a good process a, a couple of years ago, but with the need of reporting EE students, ECSE and MCCC reporting, the state student ID is probably needed before that point. Got it. Great. Thank you for doing that. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love having you folks on. All right. Great. All right. Mars settings. Set it and forget it. Minnesota schools need only to visit one page to enter their MAR settings. These settings contain basic grade level information that is used to create students' MARS records. Where to find it under Minnesota MARS Edit School Data. Minnesota MARS Edit School Data. First, this feature allows the entry of MARS information about the grade levels in the school, including pre-kindergarten and kindergarten designations, day length, minutes of instructional time in the average school day, school number, Title I, kindergarten indicator and preschool group indicator. Now, I am gonna show how to do it. When I get to the live view, I'm gonna ask one of the MDE folks to tell me if there is still a requirement on the minimum number of minutes in instructional day, because I'm not sure about that. That's a question that I had. So you don't need to answer now. I'll say, hey, MDE folks, can anybody tell me if there's a minimal length number, but wait till I get to the live look. All right, enter the date uh, for one grade level at a time for, e excuse me, enter the data for one grade level at a time for each JMC building. Okay, example, elementary and high school. So step one, click the edit button here to edit the grade level data in a particular row. Step two, enter the appropriate data in the corresponding dropdown lists and fields. Step three, click the update link to save your changes and to move to the next grade level or cancel link to discard them. So, so and I always tell folks, you know, the, the use, these are the kindergarten groups here, the day length and minutes, what your school number is should probably be correct already, unless you're a brand new school to JMC, you might have to edit that. What's your title one indicator, kindergarten indicator? These are all Mars codes that you can get from that Mars data uh, sheet. And so I, people sometimes say like, what code should I put in for title one or kindergarten indicator? And I say, that's not really my thing, right? I, I'll show you the, the tool of where to put it, but you'd have to check um, for sure with your Mars coordinator, or Mars professional, and also the, like the Mars data sheet to know what those codes are. But if your school has been selected for the Minnesota Voluntary Preschool Program, also called VPS, you have the ability to report which JMC grade zero subgroups are part of the VPS program. So step one, so this is only if you're part of VPS. If you're not, you don't need to worry about it. But if you're part of the VPS program, decide which grade zero subgroup you're gonna use these students for. Helpful tip, possible subgroups are KA, KB, KC, KD, KG, EC, or HK. Um, select one or more for these students. Now, typically KG is gonna be your kindergarten kids. So you're probably looking at a KE, KB, or KC. 
Step two, click the edit link to edit the data, right, on that particular subgroup. Step three, select the corresponding Mars VPS code to match your grade zero subgroup. So these are the Mars VPS codes. You, they're all hard coded in there. You choose whichever one matches for you. Step four, click the update link to save the entered data or the cancel link to discard. So let's take a live look at the Mars setting page here. Let's go under Minnesota, Mars, edit school data, Minnesota Mars, edit school data. Here's this particular, uh, it's for this particular building here. I come in here for grade one. I could put in, it's not a pre-K kindergarten group. So that would say is not specified there. What's the day length admits? All right, MDE folks, is there, is there still a 360 minute day length minute minimum or has that been altered? Do, you, do any of you know? No, this is Marilyn. There is not a really a uh, minimum number of minutes per day. Mm -hmm. We're looking at the instructional days and the minutes per day to make sure that you're getting the correct membership. You know, like for grades nine through 12, you have to have 1,020 hours in order to generate a 1.0 ADM. Got it. <clears throat> That's helpful. God, that sounds great. Well, I appreciate you do, so, saying that. I also do tell people, and, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, that's instructional time. It's not the day length of all time. We don't include passing time and we don't include lunch time too. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Great. So for folks that are brand new to Mars, the day length in minutes is the instructional time only, does not include passing time, does not include your, your lunch or breakfast time as well. All right, put your school number in here. This is one that's determined by the State Department of Education there. If you have Title I information there, you can. And then here's that preschool groups. So you can see it shows up, but I, I, if I were to come in here and say, well, KB here is going to be that, that preschool group there. And you could choose your preschool, your VPS indicator there as well. So um, before I leave this screen, uh, MDE folks, anybody wanna say anything about any of these codes or anything like that? Typically the people who have taken Mars training understand what to put here kind of from my experience, but anything, that else that you want to point out before I move on? This is Marilyn again. Um, I just want to specify for the Title I. It used to be a couple years ago, we would take the Title I flag from your A file that gets um, pulled. The last couple of years, we have now been using the Title I code that comes from the serves title side of things. So if you leave your Title I flag blank by accident, that's okay. Uh, we'll look at it from our standpoint. We in, import the information from the server side to put out the correct Title I code. Got it. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, great. All right. Well, let's go to, let's go here and oops, hold on here. There we go. All right, let's go to the floor is yours. Go ahead and share your question with the host using the Q&A chat feature. So we've got some that have come in here, Brett. So go ahead and let me know where we're at with this. Okay, Corey asks, my instructional days are different for grades three through 12, but there are no special days in my calendar. This is this a calendar question? Yes. Okay, can you, sorry. No, no, that's right. And that's fine. Can you repeat it again then? Yeah, my instructional days are different for grades three through 12, but there are no special days on the year month calendar. If I understand that correctly, then that's, that, that's somebody at your school needs to go in and set those special days, right? So somebody has set your district calendar days and you would wanna go in and, um, and to your calendar and set those special days. You know, that's, what that, that's what that portion is there for. Okay, Paul, here's uh, another one. Um, I am new to this position. Boy, that happens in schools, doesn't it? Um, can you share with me why we would have different school numbers for our elementary and high school? Well, you have to have different. I mean, I, I from my perspective, and somebody from MDE can, can chime in here. I, I think you, well, unless you're K-12 building, um, typically we have like a 010020, but can somebody from the MDE tell us what the, the thought is? I think they're just identifying numbers, right? Does, um, anybody want to chime in on that from the MDE folks? I, I always just ask people to put in their Mars, <laughs> their, their school building numbers in there, but um, any thoughts there from the MDE folks? For school numbers, you have to have a separate one for like elementary and middle and high school if they're three different buildings. So then you've got your grade levels for your 
elementary, middle, high school. Some of them could be classified a little differently uh, because you might have a middle school that's not four, uh, five through eight, it might be four through eight. So we wanna keep them separate because there's different calculations for ADM, which is your average daily membership. You wanna make sure you're getting the correct funding also by building. And where would they go to find their school number? Where, where do they go to the Mars West site? Or I mean, again, this is, you know, you can tell I'm not familiar with the Mars site, but where would, is, is there a place they could go? They can go out to the um, MDE org site and they can go in by their district. They can click on their district and then they can see the schools that are valid within their district for that, the current school year. Got it. Great question. So the answer then is you have to get the numbers that are off of your mars.org site and that's what you need to enter in there. But if you're an existing JMC school, you, you should not have to do any editing to the Mars, the, the number, the school number there because they would carry over from the previous year. It'd be somebody that was a brand new charter school or somebody who switched uh, to JMC this year. And I, I think we might even fill in some of that data for you as well. Not sure, but definitely double check. Great. Brett, any other questions? Real quick, uh, yeah. Just real quick, I added the link to MDE org in the answers. So if people need to look at what that MDE org is and how to get there, that's in the answers. Great, MDE.org. Let me, I'll just bring it up here as well since we're, we're looking up here. So great, MDE.org. Nope, that, it's, it's, it's on Department of Education. Oh, I put the link in there, education.mn.gov. It, it's oh, in the answers. Is oh, the link gotcha. To well, that. I knew that, but I was just taking it from there. So, okay, gotcha. I can see that there. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, other questions there, Brett? Um, yeah, I struggle with what grade to put for kids who get a preschool screening in the student data screen. In the MARS record, they will be PS, but I have to choose a grade like KA, KB, KC, KD, which messes up my list when I generate them. Is there any way around this? Uh, well, actually, a couple things. First of all, you are correct, right? On the um, on the edit school data, you do need to choose. Hold on here, Minnesota, Mars, edit school data. You do need to to choose one of those kindergarten subgroups there and you need to mark it as preschool. But the, the idea that it messes up your reports is not true because almost every report now can be broken out um, by the kindergarten subgroups here um, uh, as well. Cause we list those kindergarten subgroups here on uh, attendance totals by student membership count, student lists. So uh, if there's a report that we have that does not break out those kindergarten subgroups, um, you sure can let us know. But what that person's doing is they're probably running their reports by grade zero, when in fact, you'd wanna run them by that subgroup that's listed there as well. And that, whether it's under grade zero or not, or if we ever change that, there's still gonna be those, 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 those subgroups in some way. So they don't mess up your lists or any of your state reporting or anything like that. You do need to choose a kindergarten subgroup and you do need to, to make sure that it's set to be preschool or kindergarten on the edit school data screen. And then now that we've expanded almost all reports to be broken down by subgroups, your reporting is good to go. Great question. Great, anything else? That's it for now, Paul. All right. All right, now we go to manage Minnesota enrollment. Mastering how to manage students enrollment throughout the year using add, drop, and re-enter options in JMC Office is a skill worth knowing. Understanding when and how to use each function properly will help ensure your data is consistent and trouble-free. So first we'll start with adding, activating, and re-entering students. Bringing st uh, students can be included and added into your database in a variety of ways. There's three options for doing so that have similar purpose, but a slightly different net effect. You can add a student again, re-enter or activate. And here's the difference. You'll add a student if the student is attending your school district for the first time for the current school year or joining over the summer. You'll re-enter a student if the student already attended your school district during the current school year was dropped during the current school year and is returning for an additional span of enrollment. And then you'll activate a student if the student dropped out of your school during the previous year before the school year was over and returned over the summer. So I'll tell folks that the best thing to do when it comes to adding, adding re-entering, activating and dropping students is to have this presentation slide 
with you as you go. You don't even need to watch the video, right? But you can have this ready to go. Download it to a PDF. The YouTube, I'll be, I'll be sending the link to this presentation to everybody who's registered for this instructional um, time. <clears throat> if you're watching this on YouTube, in the description lower down, you'll have to click show more will be the link to this. This is the kind of the go-to place to make sure that you are adding, act, re-entering, activating, dropping, or deleting students correctly. So you'll find add student under attendance student, add student. <clears throat> you'll find re-enter re student under attendance student, re-enter student. And you'll find activate student and view student data. So office professionals can enter a new student in the database using the new student wizard. The wiz will walk you through steps for entering demographic data on the student data page, as well as other important information. So access the new student wizard in JMC office and go to, uh, go to edit new student wizard to get started. Go to check, or excuse me, click the new to district or returning to district radio button to begin entering de student demographic data for your new student. So new to district is a student who's never been entered into the JMC database. Returning to district student is a student that may already be in the JMC database from a past year. Now, unsure about whether a student is new or existing? Go to the view student data screen here and change the grade down drop menu to all and enter the new student in the find field. The reason we changed to all is that's gonna show you all your active kids. Right now it's set to active, but active and inactive kids. If there is already a record of the student in your district database, they will appear here. You can check for the existence of the student in past years using the exact same steps if you want to. Step two, so if that's done, then you would choose returning this district and then you would click that new student button. But for most of the students that are coming right now, they're probably gonna be new to the district. So that's the, the cadence I'm gonna follow. Step two, click the new student button to begin entering data for the new student or click the cancel button to exit the new student, uh, existing student pop-up. Now that you've chosen to create a new record, it's time to enter the demographic details. At a minimum, you need to enter the last name, first name, gender, and grade level in the appropriate fields and drop down list to enter a student into the database. Step four, remove a, the check mark from the active attendance state reporting rank or honorable checkboxes to have the student not included in those categories or simply leave the checkbox checked to keep the student included. In essence, if this kid's brand new, you're gonna leave all these checkboxes checked here. Um, the only reason I would, for a new student that you might uncheck something is um, if they were a student that was maybe not included in rank and honor roll, they received special educational services. Uh, another uh, circumstance, if a student is a, a foreign exchange student, um, I don't think they're reported to Mars um, or MCCC. They probably wouldn't be on your rank and honor roll as well if they're there just as a FCS student for one year but they'd still be active at 10. But you always can reach out to our tech support team if you need help with that. But a student coming in who's just attending classes for the first time, you'd leave all those boxes checked. All right, fun fact, place a check mark in the additional check box if the student should be marked for any of these programs down here. And to the remainder of the demographic data items in the general tab in the appropriate fields or drop down list to complete your record. If you're in a rush or maybe you don't have that data, you can come back later instead of and enter the remaining demographic items you have when the information is readily available. And step six, click either of the save button. So if you don't have like the state, the Mars ID, which is over here or their birth date, you just want to get them in, right? It's the third day of school and they walk in, I'm ready for school. And you're like, okay, uh, let me put you in there and get you a schedule. You could do that and enter the demographic data later. After clicking the save button, you'll be taken to the attendance student add student page to enter enrollment information. Step seven, select the day, the, uh, the excuse me, select the date from the day list box to start uh, the set the, excuse me, starting enrollment date for the new student. Fun fact, did the student enroll over the summer? Click the skip add button to automatically enroll them on the first day of school. There's no need to select the first day of school or other information. So this is important. If a kid came over the summer, you do not select the first day of school. It actually won't even let you, you can click it, but it won't let you add it because we automatically enroll kids on the first day of school. You click skip add because no ad code is needed that we know additional ad code. We put the ad code information for you. Um, so we make it really easy for you to put kids in over the summer. Just click that skip add button. Step eight, select the appropriate entry code from the add code dropdown list to specify the condition under which the student is entering the district. Step nine, enter the information about your new student regarding enrollment in your district using the appropriate dropdown list. Step 10, click the add button to save the newly added student in the database. Students who joined your school, so this is activating a, a, a returning student over the summer. So students who joined your school in a previous year but left before the school year was complete need to be activated over the summer. Step one, you'll select the student right here. Step two, make sure to check the active, attend, Mars, MCC, 
rank and honor roll checkbox. Of course, if it was a special ed student or some student who wasn't included in some of these, you wouldn't, but you at least would most likely check active attendant Mars and MCC to activate that student for the school year. And then you click either the save buttons to save them. Just like another any other kid who came over the summer, you don't need to put an ad code in because JMC automatically enrolls them with the correct ad code information on the first day of school, which is really cool. Now, if a student is returning uh, during the school year, you come in and what that means is a student is was at your school, and this is important. Now, a student was at your school for 10 days this year and they left and they came back. That we call that to, the, the process there to re-enter a returning student, right? If they just came back over the summer, right? We're following this process here. It's kids who have left, um, so at your school left and came back. In this part here, we go to JMC office, we visit attendance, student, re-enter student. First, you'll select the kid. Now you'll notice there's not many kids here. Why is that? Because we only display kids who attended at least one day of school this year and dropped this year. We don't even allow you to come here and choose a kid that hasn't been part of that criteria. Step two, select the date from the day box to indicate the start date for the selected student. Step three, enter data in the appropriate fields to specify enrollment information about the student. Step four, click the re-enter button to re-enroll the student in your school. Fun fact, the appropriate enrollment history record will be updated automatically. So that's adding students. Now we're gonna to go to dropping, inactivating, and deleting. And so what I think I'm gonna do here, Brett, is I'm going to, I'll show all the different options, then I'll go through and start, I'll do the add options and we'll see if people have questions, then we'll do the drop and see if people have questions and we'll kind of go from there. So we'll hold all of our questions till I'm showing the live view. Students can be removed or dropped from your database in a variety of ways. These options have a similar purpose, but a slightly different net effect. You'll drop a student if the student will be dropping from your school, but has attended at least one day of school, or the student has a change in special education status mid-year. So that's something important of you. will drop them if they're dropping from school, or they have a change in their special education status mid-year. You'll delete a student if the student will never attend the school again and there's been no data submitted to the State Department of Education for this student for the specified year. Uh, if you've been part of my trainings before or been part of the EdPi trains I've done the last three years, um, I'll tell you I'm not a big fan of deleting students unless it's a duplicate student because it can be a pain if you've put student data in and then you send it in via EdFi. If you delete a student, you actually have to put that student back in and then go in and delete them from EdFi. Now, if you don't know what EdFi is or you're not familiar, you don't even need to know what that means. All you need to know is that Paul said, I probably shouldn't delete a student unless they're a duplicate student because it just can cause you to be kind of a pain because on the view student data screen, right? We, we, we changed this years ago on that view student data screen, just set the students you wanna see to all active and then all the inactive kids, kids that have been dropped, you don't see them anymore. So there's no reason to really delete them. People wanna kind of want to clean up their data, quote unquote. Uh, sure, I, I can appreciate that. I'm not saying that that's not a good thing to do, but you would wanna make sure that this particular item here, that no data has been submitted to the State Department for the student for the specified year. So let's look at those steps. First, you'll find a drop a student under attendance student, drop student, and delete a student under edit, delete a student. So. Students who leave school are dropped from your student enrollment roster in JMC office. Go to attendance student, drop student. Select the student that you want here. Select the day that they were last enrolled here. Helpful tip, if the student leaves before the first day of school, log into the previous year and drop them on the last day of school. That's important as well. Students who leave before the first day of school, you log into the previous school year and drop them on the last day of school. And that's, that's something that was updated as of last year. Dropping a student continued. Select the drop code using the drop or status encode drop down list to indicate the reason that the student is leaving. Step four, click the drop button to drop the student from your enrollment roster with the specified date and drop code. Helpful tip, if the student returns, that's when we use that re-enter student like we were talking about there. I leave that helpful tip here because if you're just using these directions here, you'll know that what to do if that student comes back. If a student has a change in special education status, you simply drop them with a drop code of 99 and re-enter the students with the appropriate code. So I want to say that again. If a student has a change in a special education status, simply drop them with a drop code of 99 and re-enter them with the student with the appropriate codes. Because you know what these MARS records do and the way it was taught to me originally by Sean, and, I, and I, this is stuck with me, MARS records have to do with funding. If you have a change in a student's funding, you need to change their record. And in part, this particular situation, we're, we're, we're ending a record, we're dropping them and then starting a new record. 
Also deleting the students. Students who will never attend the school again and for whom there's been no data submitted to the State Department for the current year can be deleted in JMC Office and edit, delete a student. This is actually done at the district level. Find the student here. And I say when you find them, I, especially if they're, if they're duplicate students, I like to match up on their student ID, not just their, 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 um, their name. Select the student you'd like to delete by highlighting the student's name from the list of students displayed. Step three, click the delete button to delete the student from the current year's database. Helpful tip, if, the student, uh, if you delete a student and they return to your school, simply check them as a returning student and find them in the previous year. So that can be helpful there as well. Then here's where we get to changing a student's Mars status here. So I'm gonna grab a drink here as we get into this one. Actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna first go through the ads and drops, Brett. And then I'll come to changing a student's Mars status because it's related to enrollment for sure. But I want to go through the other items there as well. So let's go through it. I'm just going to walk through the idea of adding a new student in, dropping them, and then um, re-entering them. So I'm going to go under edit to new student wizard, edit to new student wizard. Got a great, great new student here. He's new to the district. If, I, if it was returning, say I did find a kid, I actually could find their name in here and I could put them as a returning student. But I'm going to pretend we're putting in a new to the district student. Here we go. Last name, Joyce. Maybe it's your brother, Paul Joyce there, Brett. Paul, what's the gender? Male, grade level, four. I'm leaving all of these checked. Now I'm gonna click save. It takes me to the add student screen. Now again, important. Um, if the student um, comes over the summer, right? Then you can use the skip ad button. That's all you need to do right here. They come over the summer right now. We skip ad. We don't need to put an ad code again because JMC puts the correct ad code in. But if they start after the first day of school, right here, such as because this is the first day here, right? You'll see that that's the first day. If I come here and I choose this day right here, 921, I'd enter the information in right here. Okay. Any codes you want, but you can edit them later, but as much as you can do here, and then click the add code. And that will add that student. Cool thing is it brings you back right to this screen. Now I can put in contact information or their birth date or whatever it might be. And then I click the save button. So that's the add portion of that. Brett, I saw some questions came in. Any questions about just entering a new student with the, the correct add code? Um, yeah, there's one. If we change, oh yeah, one question. If we change the other information above and click skip add, will it change? Or does it keep that information? If you click skip add, it doesn't take anything from that screen and bring it over here. Skip add does not put a new, it does not create a new Mars record is what it does. It doesn't change anything there because uh, we do that for them on the first day of school. So skip add says, hey, I'm not going to do anything from that screen to the Mars record. So that's what you should do again. If you needed to add something here, you would then, and I'll show you how to change this in a minute. If you need to add something for a student, you'd come here and change their Mars record right here for somebody that came over the summer. Great question. One more here, Paul. If yeah. if uh, I have had parents of students who are enrolled with us in prior years enroll their student using online registration, however, it creates a duplicate student each time. Is there a way to prevent this from happening? It, yes, there is. So this is a little bit of a sidestep, just so folks know. So this has not this is not necessarily about Mars, but it's a great question. Is that when you're doing online registration, that's the awesome feature where families can go in and, and update their contact information. They can fill out their uh, their Minnesota ancestry information through the online registration. We're big promoters of the Minnesota ancestry online registration portion there. They can fill out their free and reduced app information online. That's all. I've got great instructional videos on that process. I'm going to do a little plug here on my YouTube channel. It's on my it's on the JMC YouTube channel here. It's under the JMC training, under the videos. I back in March or April and May last year, I did two trainings: um, summer online registration 040721, and then we did another one on updates to online registration. So both are great resources for doing online registration. It, it, what we point out in there is that in the JMC family online registration setup for the for the um, configurable options here. For the at the district, I think it's the district here. Let me just look here because I don't remember if it's by building or by districts. I wasn't thinking about this one here. Uh, there's a checkbox allow new student addition. So in each building, you would uncheck that. I don't want them putting new students in. Check that, take that off, and then you're then you're good to go. Great question. So a little sidestep, but great question because we don't want them putting duplicate kids in. Because if you put duplicate kids in, then that per person saying Paul Freed, I have to delete them because I put duplicate kids in. So great question. Any other questions about adding students or should we go to dropping students? Uh, you're good to go, Paul. 
So to drop a student, so Paul um, Joyce said, I love this school, came here for 10 days and said, ugh, this school's not for me. You go to attendance, student, drop student, attendance, student, drop student. And come up there for a second. Just like the ad student there, my, my internet's running a little slow. I'll just tell you as it goes in here. I don't know why it's taking so long. Under that, I'll just go back here because it is so darn easy. You simply come in here, choose the student, select the day that they're leaving, select their drop coding kick drop. It, it's it's really easy to be able to um, to raise it to um, to drop a student there because you, when you drop, you're basically just telling them where they're going to. So that's really there. We go. So here's here's Paul Joyce. He's going to drop on, let's just say it's on 10-4. Choose the reason, lots of different reasons there, and then drop that student. It will tell you student has been dropped, the status and code, and the corresponding Mars record was also updated. You can verify that by going to um, uh, the student data screen there as well. Okay, any questions about dropping students, Brett? Uh, no, Paul. Um, I just have one about... Just a calendar question is all. Let's wait on that one. Does that sound good? Absolutely. Great. So then we'll go to attendance, student, re-enter students. So again, who's a re-entered student? It's a student who was at your school for some duration during this school year, left during the school year, and came back during the school year. That's why Paul is here, Paul Joyce and Mildred, because that's only two students that that has happened to. I come here. He came. He left on the 4th. He went to a different school. And then it wasn't but three days. He came crawling back. He's like, whew. I tell you, Minnesota High School is the place for me. You fill out any of the information here. We actually have the status end code is hard coded in there for you and their building number. And then we re-enter that and that will re-enter that student. Student's been re-entered. The corresponding Mars record was also inserted. You may verify the Mars data on the student data page by clicking the Mars tab. And there we go. So the, that's, the, uh, that's the ads, drops, and re-enters. So let me take just a second before I show how to do the... Um, the editing of a student's Mars record there. So any questions about the, that came in? Actually, and I, want, I want to point out one more thing here under attendance, student drop student, that code 99, just to reinforce people here. Let me grab a drink of water while this is loading. That code 99 that I highlighted right here on this screen, that's the change of enrollment function there. So that's just saying, hey, the kid didn't actually leave, right? They had a, a specific change of change in their Mars status enrollment. So if I click on here, I think it's the last one. There we go. It might be hard to read, so I'll read it to you. Students' enrollment status has changed, <clears throat> necessitating the closing of one status record and the opening of a new one. Any other questions about dropping students, or should we go to, to changing the Mars status line there? Paul, you've got one on dropping. If we drop during the summer, we're to go into the previous year mm -hmm. and we drop them from that year? On the last day of school. Yep, so I come in here, I'm on drop student. I say, oh, this is the previous year. I'll come in here to 2021. I'll find this student here, Bobby Jones. I'd scroll to the last day here and I would choose that. Oops, the last day, there it is. And then I would drop that student on the last day of school for whatever code, it is, student withdrawn by parents or whatever code is, is listed there. Yep, great question. One other question here, Paul. Mm -hmm. We do all dropping and re-entering on Mars tab by ending the current record and adding a row. Are we causing issues by doing this? I um, <clears throat> Theoretically, you can do it that way, but I would do it the way I'm showing you for two reasons. Number one, as things, uh, you, you know, let me say it this way. People, people, I'm going to take a step back and talk about EdFi. People get nervous about EdFi because like, oh, this is a different form of reporting, new data and things like that. And my perspective and I, our perspective at JMC is that EdFi is just a different way of reporting Mars data, right? There are, sure, there's some new fields, right? But it's still Mars data. And so when I talk about my next statement being that with EdFi coming, there might be changes to the way that we're having you enter that data over the next couple of years. And so I encourage people to do it this way because this is the way that we expect schools to do it. And it's the way that if you call tech support and say, hey, I'm having trouble adding or dropping kids, um, they're gonna say, well, when you added the kid this way or drop the kid this way. So it's, it, I would say it's no harder to do it this way than going to the Mars status line. So I would do it this way because then you're following the documentation, you're following the, the, the things that are listed there. If I thought, oh, this is gonna take you a long, lot 
longer, I would say, oh, I don't know if I'd do it this way, but it doesn't take you any longer. I would do it this way because you're consistent with, uh, you know, all the other schools in the state of Minnesota that use JMC. There's like 45% or something like that. Um, when those schools call tech support or email in, they're expecting that schools are doing it this way. So technically you can do it, but I, you know, I'm a fan of best practices and, and because this best practice uh, is pretty easy, I would do it that way. But there's still some manual uh, changing of Mars records. So I will, I'll, and that's what we're going to go to next. So it's a great segue question. So changing a Mars status line. These are great questions, Brett. Yeah, Paul, I got a clarification one here. Yeah. For summer leavers, the previous direction was to do a record in the fall reporting, not the EOY of the previous year. This Has this changed? I, I do believe that, that that we actually that was changed as of last year. I, I, MD folks, do you want to do you want to chime in on that? Because that was a question that came up last year. I think we verified that we now drop kids okay. in the previous year. Is that right? Uh, actually, you're going to drop them after. So if a student moves during the summer, yep. so they're with the, the district at the end of the school year, status and code will be a 40. Then the next year in fall, they're going to create that end of year. I'm sorry, the summer leaver, summer grad record. So it gets reported in fall of 21, 22. So you have to clarify for me. And I appreciate that. Are, are they being dropped in the previous year or are you saying they're dropped in the current? And so if a kid dropped, uh, uh, a kid left over the summer, am I logging into 2021 and dropping them? Or are you saying we need to do it in 21, 22? 2021 would have the status encode of a 40, not a drop code. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Moves over the summer, they create that drop code in the 21-22 school year for a summer leaver. So we've got the the 40 here. End of year students were enrolled the last day of school. So a summer leaver, you'd go into 2021 and drop them with a drop code of 40. Is that correct? That's what should be coded on. Uh, yes. I mean, yep. basically yes. Yeah. For 2021. Great. This is this is great. Now, are you saying then that also have to do another record adjustment for 21-22? Yep, they'll do a summer leaver record in the fall of 21-22. That's the record that gets coded with the status or the state aid category 98. And if it's a summer leaver, if the student went to a care and treatment, sure, they passed away, that would become a summer leaver record. So uh, thank you for that. But there, every kid is not, or, uh, this is a question, Every kid that leaves over the summer is not a summer leaver. It's only those specific uh, situations. Is that correct? Correct. If they if they're just returning the next year or they've actually moved to another public Minnesota district, they don't have to do anything for a summer record. It's yep. only if those specific codes um, happen, that's when they're going to do the summer leaver record. So let me. This is great. Let me repeat that back. If a kid leaves over the summer and and they just went to another Minnesota public school just normal situation, you drop them in 2021 with that exit code of 40. And then you're done with that student. But if a student meets the summer lever, and I, actually I might have a documentation on this. I know the state, you have some summer lever things as well. Let me just check. Let me see. I don't have one. I you I thought I had one, but you, you guys I thought you had a, also a, a sheet on the summer leavers. Is that correct? Because there's, yeah, there's um, the Mars Procedure 12 that's posted to the website now is how to create summer leavers, summer drops, and um, summer graduates. Great, awesome. If you want to, you could email that to me. I could post that with this video. But the summer leavers are specific situations, right? A student uh, unfortunately was deceased or some other things as well. Is that right? Correct. Yep. So for just to repeat again, students who are just normal leavers switching from one school to the next, you drop them in 2021 with the encode of 40 and you're done. But the summer leavers students, special, very special situations um, that then you would need to note in the current school year um, with their Mars record, why they left at that particular time. Correct. And the only reason that you have to do that is because of the, the dropout rate for each individual district. So we mm. keep track of that. And these students with those specific codes are not considered dropouts. That's why we do the summer leaver record. So they're not included in the district's dropout percentage. Gotcha. Would I be able to quickly search and find that Minnesota summer leavers document or would it be too challenging? Um, it's on our website. Mm -hmm. It's under the student reporting side. 
if I can't find it quickly, that's okay. Cause I can post it too. Okay. And I don't mean to put you on the spot. So if we don't know, okay, I can also. Okay. Linda, the district schools and educators. Good. And business finance. Okay. School finance. And on the left hand side, go to Mars Student Accounting. You know where this is at. And then just uh, scroll down. Oops, I'm sorry. Then we need to click on a last one, the Mars Reporting Instructions. Pardon me. I missed one step. That's I'm right. Slide click on Other, Mars Thank you. I'm doing pretty well, just so you know. I'm kind of proud of myself here. And then just scroll down. And then you'll see the Mars manual and just click the plus sign. Oh, there we go. Yep. And then we have all the data elements and then all the procedures and appendices. And so which pr procedure is it? Your 12 is what you want to look at for the summer drop off. There so it is. Awesome. There it is. And then you tell, and I love, I, I've actually seen this talk before. You tell them what the elements are and what, who they are, what the procedure is, all right in there. So great, great. Um, Great uh, document there. Did this generate some questions, um, Brett? Oh boy, Paul, here we go. <laughs> um, first of all, do we drop all SPED students and re-enter them in GMC for the new school year? No. No, you would just, um, you would update their stats from last end of year. And if you need to make a change, you would make that change because the new year is a new record. So no, you don't need to drop them. And okay. MD, you can tell me if I'm wrong about that, but. I've not had that question before, but I, I've not ever had somebody dropping all their SPED students. So you update their stats from last end of year and then update their, their record accordingly. Because it's a new record. You're starting the new year on the first day of school. Perfect. Uh, I just unchecked student information, attendance active or Mars, if they move somewhere in Minnesota. Is that not correct? Nope, you need to drop, if a student leaves over the summer, you need to log into 2021 and you need to drop them with the drop code of 40. So you have to log into the last day of school last year and say they dropped on the last day of school. They completed the school year. Let me go back to that. Do not uncheck those flags. That's kind of really what we're saying here. Don't just uncheck those flags. You need to go into the previous school year. So I'm in, I would be in 2021, choose the last day of school and drop them with that 40 end of year students were enrolled the last day of school. Great, Paul. Summer leavers are not all students who leave during the summer months. Summer leavers move out of the state, et cetera. Is that just a clarification statement? I think so. The summer leavers, and this is where I want to bring up that document, the summer leavers are those that meet the procedure 12 reporting of summer dropouts, graduates, and leavers. So if somebody has a question, who are the summer leavers that I need to report in a special way, they should refer to this procedure 12 document on the Minnesota Department of Education website. Great, Paul. Here's one question. Um, I had an issue with a summer leaver. She was a senior in 1920 and did not graduate. So her status in code in 1920 was four. And then 2021 reported her in the first day of school only as a summer leaver. Um, and then, however, she joined ALP in 2021. I could not enter her in the ALP building. How should this be done? I got an error on my JMC um, that prevented that. Do I need to remove her summer leaver record in the high school for 2021? Wow, this is a pretty involved one here, Paul. That, that is pretty involved. It's time for a bathroom break, folks. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, if you get an error, I would just, and you don't understand it, take a screenshot of it, send it to our tech support team and they, they can, they'll be able to look at that. So I, I'm not quite able to determine based at, yeah, how involved it is right now, what you would do with that student. So take a picture or print it to a PDF, send it to our tech support team and they can help you with that one. Great, Great question. Um, just for summer leavers fall record, do we use a drop a student? Say that again. Yeah, I said for summer leavers fall record, do you use drop a student? If a student, uh, a, a summer leaver, you would go in, yep, and you would drop them with that, that status encode. Uh, of nine, you check their state aid category, right? It's all, I would look through it right here first. And then um, this is gonna walk you through that, but yep, you're going to drop them. So here's the status end code for these summer graduates and the status end. So that's where you, how you would drop that out. Um, so status end code of 08. So if I come here, 
do right, student graduate from public school. So the question I think is, how do I uh, drop a summer lever as I would come here and I would drop them this way. But the thing to note is, and the MD is doing a great job at this, they're telling you that there's other data elements that need to be touched. So when you typically drop a kid, you're just putting in the status encode, right? And the date, but um, you need to make sure to set their last location of attendance and their state aid category. And that's what this walks you through. So you're gonna do two steps. You're gonna go and drop them. And then you're gonna do what I'm gonna show you now, which is to edit their Mars data screen. I will say one other thing is that in any process that seems a little complicated, because sure, I'm not gonna lie, I mean, it's, a, it's a little complicated, right? It's, you know, this, and these are, that's why these are special situations. Some are dropouts or some are graduates who've done these particular things or some are leavers. I would just take this document and I would go through and drop the kid with the correct code and finish it all at once. Close your door, it might take you a minute if you can do it, but you gotta concentrate on it for sure. Great, other questions? I think we're good for now, Paul. Great. All right. So here we go. So again, criteria for changing a student status line. Students who have changed in their MARS status during the school year will need their MARS record updated. This means the student's not being added or dropped, but something has changed in the services the school is providing for the student. There are many reasons this can happen during the school year, but one of the most common is if a student changes the special educational services they're receiving mid-year. If a student has a special change in special ed status, you simply drop them with a drop code of 99, like we talked about, and then re-enter the student as was shown in the previous sections. To change a student's ESY or summer school status, you must first close out their previous MARS record status line and then start a new MARS status line record. So this is, I'm gonna walk you through this here. So first, in JMC Office, Visit View Student Data and click the Mars tab right here. Step two, find the kid that you want to work with. Step three, click the Edit button to edit the existing Mars record of the student. Now, the first thing we're doing, just so you know, is we're ending a record here. So everybody knows it's a two-step process. You're ending a record and starting a new record. Then enter the information to close out the student's current enrollment record. Select a status end date and status end code from the corresponding drop-down lists here. Right? What's the date at the status end and why? Are, what is the status end code? Right? I chose 99 because I'm closing out the record. Then enter any additional information. Right? This is stuff, again, that I'm not uh, as familiar with, uh, like the, you know, whatever, the special ed evaluation status or the service hours or whatever. That's stuff that you or Mars professional would know. We just have that tool. Step five, click the update button to update the student's Mars record or the cancel button to discard. So you're, gonna, you're saying, hey, this is the end date, end code, fill out any other information and click update. Now we're gonna start a new record. So now let's add that new Mars record for the student. You'll click the add row button to create a new Mars status record for the selected student. Step seven, click the edit button to edit the newly created Mars record. Now that the newly record is created, it's time to enter the new Mars record information. Again, this is totally up to you now. You'll update all the Mars enrollment with the necessary changes using the appropriate fields and drop down list. So it's totally up to you how you wanna do that um, based on your knowledge of Mars and the guides that they have. And then you'll click the update button right there. So what I'm showing you is simply how to close out and add a new record in here as well. It's actually pretty simple. You just have to make sure that you're adjusting the correct fields. So let's find a student here. Let's find, uh, let's find I was gonna find, Mr. Joyce, but I think I dropped him already. So we'll come here to Mars. Okay, has one record date here. Start status, start date is 907, because that's my first day of school. We're gonna come in here and say, okay, let's say I'm I'm in the school year already, right? On status end is gonna be, let's go a little lower here. Let's go 08 or 730, Friday, 730. Okay, and what's the end code? We're gonna do 99. Students enrollment has changed, okay? Um, and I'm gonna click update that. Okay, now that actually by dropping the student, it also would do that for you. So this is just that manually changing it here. So once I've dropped the kid, I'm basically doing that same thing there, but you still might need, and again, not, this is not my strong point. You still might need to come in and edit those, these different things, the percent roll or whatever it might be. Here's the key. So I've ended the enrollment. I've dropped the kid or I've come here and changed it here. Now I add a row. And what's cool is when I add a row, let me hear. Let's make sure I have to save it here. I don't think I do. Let's add a row here. Let me edit here. It means that I didn't do something with that record there. 730. Oh, here's the problem. Look at this. Here's the problem I made. I chose a date 
that was previous to the first day of school. So it's going to say, nope, you can't do that, Paul. Okay, let's go down to one, three. Now I'm going to click update. There we go, Paul. Now I click add row. Now it lets me add a row. So it's not going to let you add a row if you're making a mistake, which I make mistakes. Now when I edit this, what you'll see is we automatically choose the next day for you. We drop status end of 103, status start of 104, and then you can come in and edit all the information that you want to as well. So some people get nervous, you know, ending a record, dropping them, super easy, or adding a record. Really, it's not that hard, and we make it easy by choosing that new status start date for you. Um, great. Any questions about adding a new Mars record for folks? I'll, I'll give it a second here. Okay. And MDE folks, anybody want to add any ideas there? I know this is kind of JMC specific, right? As to how JMC does it, we might do it different than other SISs. Um, but any thoughts you have on ending and starting a new record? And Brett, I did see a question come in. Anything else there or should I keep on rolling? Yeah, Paul, we had one here again. And all summer school students need a new record. Do, do all summer school students need a new record? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if they would need a new record. I'm just thinking about this or not. I, I think they would. That's, I'm going to have to guess a little bit. Did, folks from MDE, do you know if we'd have to add a new status line for summer folks? I would assume you would. No, only if they're going to enroll, like in an ALP or ALC, early childhood, handicapped kindergarten, or if they're a summer leaver. Got if it. They're with you the prior year and they roll over to the next year. You don't have to create something in the summer unless they're actually attending. Got it. Great. Thank you for that. Great answer. Anybody else? Is that good, Brett? Um, now we've got a couple more. If I drop a student in a previous year, do I need to do any Mars adjustments for that student in the new year? I think we covered that. Yeah, only you would have to if they meet the criteria as a Mars summer leaver on that. Is it section 12 here? Do you need it only if they meet the procedure 12 um, uh, verification there? Yep. Great. Anything else there, Brett? I see only the first row as, has an include box, or is that just because you haven't clicked on update yet? This one right here. So the, the first row has the include in Mars. So you can make a record and not include it in Mars. We'll talk about that a little bit later. So once I've updated it and then I edit that again, I can come in and not, I can say, I don't want to include that record there, but that's a special circumstance. So you typically wouldn't uncheck that unless you really knew that there's a reason to do that. And we'll talk about that actually coming up here. That's it, Paul. Great questions, folks. Okay. Here's the golden hamburger for you folks. Keeping on top of ads, drops, and re-enters and deletes will take care of the vast majority of issues that might arise with Mars reporting by reducing unnecessary time spent tracking student enrollment errors that occurred earlier in the year. So really important to make sure you keep on top of those. All right, key takeaways. First, there are specific steps to follow for each type of change in a student's enrollment. Knowing these steps will help you have a smooth state reporting process when it comes to the fall and end of your submissions. Great feature alert, when a student's added, dropped, or re-entered in JMC office, a student's Mars record is automatically updated. And a planning tip, who's in charge of enrollment at your school? Consistency is key. So many schools, uh, so many schools choose to have one person in charge of all student enrollment records. I, if it was just me, I would not have a team of people editing Mars summer leaver records. I would have one person doing that, right, to make sure that there we have that consistency. All right, I think we got through the questions there, Brett, uh, for each area. So I think I'm going to go on to the fall submissions. Does that sound good? Well, first of all, what what is that last calendar question there, Brett? Okay, yeah, we do have a calendar question. So uh, wondering why automatically Saturdays and Sundays are no school days. Do you have to click through these on the entire calendar? Why they are or are not no school days? Why are they are not listed as no school? I thought that they were, but let me just check and see under tenants calendar days. Um, mine are, and uh, I might've saw that issue come into tech support. So you sure could shoot a message to tech support and see why they aren't all marked, but they, they should be all marked as no school days. So you could shoot a message to tech support about that. Great. Great, Paul. Um, one more here. You have to enter the summer lever on the first day of school for the start date and end date and status end code would be 98 summer lever. Make sure only the Mars box, not active, attendance, et cetera, is checked in the general tab on the student data screen. 
Sure. Yeah, absolutely. I think that, that coincides with kind of what we were talking about. I think that person just re reiterating what we're saying is that you would, with that Marista reliever, you're going to do the exact codes that they talked about there. And they're saying then, because that student's not in your building, uh, I, great, I appreciate the person drawing this out, is that you would then say that they are not active in attending because they did not ever attend a day of school. And I, I guess I, I should take a moment to say, if folks are brand new to JMC, the active flag means that the student is active. They attended at least, or they're active here today at your school. And the attend flag means that they have some attendance information stored for the current school year, even if it's one day. So if a kid's dropped from your building, we actually automatically uncheck the active flag for you. saying they're not here anymore but there's some attendance information. So that summer lever, if you uncheck this, it's actually good because they're not gonna show up on any reports that you have. So typically look like this because that summer lever never came to a day of school. You're still reporting them, but they were never active. They did not attend a day of school, not included MCC rank Ronald. Great, great, uh, great point of clarification there. All right. That's it, Paul. Nice. All right, so now we go to Fall submissions. The first Mars submission to school needs to be create. Uh, excuse me. The first Mars submission to school needs to create and upload to the fall Minnesota Department of Education is the fall files. Two files are created or captured in JMC Office called the Mars A and Mars B file. Typically, a school will go through a cyclical process of checking for Mars errors in JMC, fixing the Mars errors in JMC, creating A and B files, and submitting them to the Minnesota Department to receive an error report. This process is repeated until you have what we call a successful error-free Mars submission. I'm just gonna tell you, you're gonna hear that a lot when it comes to the transition to EdFi, right? So just do it now, get your error-free Mars submission because you're gonna to wanna to do that when we get to the EdFi transition as well. You can find the calculate attendance under Minnesota Mars calculate attendance and find capture files under Minnesota Mars capture fall files. So calculate attendance, this feature automatically enters the student's attendance membership status end date and status end code in their Mars data status line. So in Minnesota, in JMC office, visit Minnesota Mars Calculated Attendance. Click the Calculated Attendance button to calculate all the students' attendance in the school. We recommend doing this on a regular basis, even before fall submission, so you can find and adjust any errors there. So it, you don't need to do it every day, but it, before you create, get ready to create any Mars uh, A and B files, you'll want to calculate your attendance. Just a best practice. So Minnesota Mars Calculated Attendance best practice before you're going to create any Mars files. Prior to creating and submitting your Mars A and B files, an error reports run to see what errors exist so they can be corrected. And this is one thing that people really like about JMC is that we give you a kind of a pre-error report before you uh, submit it to Mars and check out the Mars West error report. In JMC office, visit Minnesota Mars Capture Fall Files. Step one, click the Check Mars Errors button to display a list of all of your Mars errors that JMC recognizes. Step two, correct the errors and run a Check Mars Errors function until you are free of errors. This feature will create uh, uh, the school A and B student fall files for Mars submissions and must be used each time you want to submit the file. So in JMC office, visit Minnesota Mars capture fall files, same building, same screen. Select the file you'd like to create using the Mars A or Mars B file radio button. Step two, click the create file button to create the specific file. Step three, click the OK button, which is over here, to save the file to your computer. Now, when you make edits to your Mars data, a new Mars A and B file should be created to, the, uh, to capture the most recent information. And these files are uploaded to the Minnesota Department of Education website for error checking and submission. I will tell you, when you save this file, this Mars file, do not open it. <clears throat> Just save it because it has certain... Um, uh, there's a term I can't think of, but there's, it's, it's set in a certain way. And if you open it up in a Google or, or Microsoft Excel, it can change leading zeros and all this other formatting. That's what it is. It has certain formatting that we are exporting and that Minnesota Department of Ed is, is expecting. If you open that up, you can change that formatting. So do not open up the file that you're going to submit to the Minnesota Department of Education. If you want to peek at a file, and I know a lot of you do, download the Mars A file, peek at it all you want, and then download another one. Don't open it and upload that one to the Minnesota Department of Education. JMC completes an initial Mars error check on the Minnesota Mars capture file file screen. The Minnesota Department of Education has an additional Mars error check that's completed prior to submitting your fall Mars files. You can navigate to the Mars web edit system, WES, to log in and submit your Mars A and B files for error checking. After receiving any errors, log back into JMC office, fix the errors, create the new Mars A and B file and upload it to Mars West site. After all errors are corrected, you'll upload your final Mars A and B files to the Minnesota Department of Education. So this is that cyclical process. People who've done JMC Mars before, you understand this. People who are brand new to Mars, just so you know, that's the cycle. Upload your, correct your errors in JMC, 
create those files that are air free, upload them to Mars West, look at your Mars West errors, fix them in JMC, upload a new file to Mars A and B to Mars West, and then you'll do that until you're air free. So file file submissions, this is pretty darn easy. We go here to Minnesota, Mars, down to calculate attendance. I calculate the attendance here. This is gonna go through and update all the status end dates actually for all my students there as well. And it's gonna go through and, um, and do that. And maybe I should have pushed that because it can take a little bit to do that, but let's see if it'll allow me to then do my capture fall file. So that's just gonna tell me that my, my attendance is calculated. If I go to my capture fall files here, it might not open because it's running that, that it's running that. So um, I'll just go back to the screenshot because I'll come back to this in just a moment here. When you calculate or when you come here to create those Mars files here, you first check for errors and then it's going to show you any of these errors. You're like, my, you can see my day length isn't correct. I don't have race ethnicity set for these students there as well. So it's um, just fix those errors and go. And I think that JMC does a good job of telling you what the errors are. So for example, you know, it says here length of day for grade three should not be less than, I'm guessing zero minutes or something like that as well. And, and you know, this kid needs a, a race ethnicity. This kid's missing a birth date or whatever it might be. So we help you go through those particular items there. Um, yeah, you just got to read those error reports and then you should be good to go. So here's our key takeaways. The Mars reference uh, guide has all the Mars codes and definitions for easy reference. Download it at the Minnesota Department of Education website. You can click on it here. It does say Mars 2021, but I checked with the great folks at MDE and that's still an up-to-date resource. And if they'll post another one if needed or maybe when that comes out. But right now that 2021 is the resource that is the go-to guide. The check Mars errors function is a convenient way to run at any time and quickly determine what errors need to be corrected. And then a key idea, the calculated attendance function is not a required step until the end of the school year for the end of your submissions. But like I said, it's best to do it continually through the year to ensure you don't have errors with students' Mars status. Myself and the MDE and our tech support team will tell you, you don't wanna wait till the end of the year to start editing errors. You wanna be taking care of them on the fly. All right, any questions about creating Mars A and B files and submitting them to the state? Uh, just what about calculating attendance? Um, okay. They've never calculated it because 99.9% .9 are enrolled. Is this going to be an EDFI problem? You know, that's a great question. And I, I probably should add a fun fact in there about that, that if your kids are 999 enrolled, mean they're tracking their hours and the, the, not by days, you do not need to run a calculated attendance. And actually you can run it because the kids that are 999, it doesn't uh, I've changed it, but I, I would not. No, I don't think you're going to have a problem with that. Well, I would bring that question to our EdFi Q&A session. That'd be the best time to bring that. I, so I can't say for certain. When you say it's going to cause a problem, I don't see it causing a problem um, because all the data is still there. Uh, so you sh should have no problem, but there's no reason to click that calculated attendance this year if you've not done it in previous years because your kids are recorded by hours. So great question. Anything else? Um. Don't, don't run calc attendance if counting out. So that's what that person's saying too. If, if yeah, you're just counting hours there, you don't need to run your calculate attendance. Perfect, Paul. Yep, that's it. The only exception to that is that some people will use JMC to actually calculate the minutes out uh, for a 999 student. So those situations, that calculation actually does do that, but if people are doing it manually, you don't need to do that. Absolutely. Great. All right, now we're gonna look at what's new and then we're gonna hear from the Minnesota Department of Education. So, so um, we're probably gonna go a little longer than the two hours, just so folks know, but we're getting great questions answered. We want this to be the resource for our schools. So I'm just gonna go as long as it takes here. JMC works closely with the great folks at the Minnesota Department of Education to ensure our software makes state reporting as easy and efficient as possible for our partners by creating automated tasks to complete new reporting requirements. We're gonna look at new early ed, ed students fields in EdFi, MCCC to EdFi transition, Minnesota Digital Equity, 21st Century Learning Fields, Special Ed History Data Element Edition, and Setting Legal Names. And I'll go through them kind of quickly, because again, you've got this resource to refer back to, but new early ed student fields in EdFi. Preschool students who are receiving early education services but are not MARS reportable have a few updates to the way their data is stored in JMC office. So again, this is preschool students. This is a really specific group of students, preschool students who are receiving early education services but are not MARS reportable, you've got to follow these steps here. And I, I, I'm telling you, because I went through these with, with our, one of our programmers, you'll want to just download these directions and follow the ones I'm laying out here. 
The first thing is to decide is which grade zero subgroup these students will be listed in and then set the correct piece preschool group code in Minnesota Mars edit school data. Step one, click the edit link, right? You've chosen on the school grade level that using the appropriate dropdown list. Step two, click EE using the preschool group dropdown list here. And I'm actually not gonna show this live because it's easier just to follow the directions, to be honest. Step three, click the update link. So I've chosen my kindergarten group. It's for this, it's gonna be KD, set them to preschool and chose EE here. Now that the correct preschool group is designated with the correct preschool group code, it's time to enter their service hours. You'll head to Minnesota, early education, edit student early education to enter the service hours for the student. Step one, find the student. Step two, click the add row button to add a record for the student. Step three, click the edit button to edit the record for the selected student. Step four, enter the service attendance hours in the service attend hours field. Step five, enter the service membership hours in the service membership field. And then click the update button to save that student's education record. So that's where you're putting in those, those service hours. Preschool students who are receiving early education services but are not MARS reportable will also have to be marked in a specific way to have their data submitted to MDE. So this is actually, I'm going back here, this is what we're entering the data, but you still have another step to, to say how that data is being submitted. To make the student's record, student's record reportable, head to view student data, find that same student. Step two, select the preschool grade zero subgroup from the kindergarten dropdown list. You need to make sure, right? I chose KD, so I got to make sure I've got this kid in the correct kindergarten group there. Step three, place a check mark in the MARS checkbox to ensure the student's record is reportable to MDE. You can decide if you want active or attendance based on our previous conversation, but their MARS flag needs to be checked. This specific type of preschool student will be reported to MDE, but it's not included in MARS when you edit the MARS record. So then you're gonna to go to the MARS tab, click the edit button to edit the student's MARS record, remove that include in check mark, or include in MARS checkbox to exclude the student from Mars, but still have their record reported to MDE, and then click the update button. Like I said, it's a process to follow to make sure that all the things are done correctly. That's so why I'm not going to show it live. I'll say you just download this doc and follow the directions, and you'll be good to go with those new students there. So I'm gonna I'm gonna wait for a second to see if anybody has any questions about this. Other than it, it, I think that the programmers helped me when I was creating this to lay out the exact steps that you need to do. Now, anybody from MDE want to add anything to these steps, or or should we just keep rolling? You can keep rolling, that's fine. Great, thank you. All right. So now let's go to the MCC to EdFi transition. This is more of just alerting you that you don't even necessarily need to do anything at the moment, but as the remaining schools switch to EdFi module of Mars State Reporting, MCC will be transitioned to the EdFi model of reporting as well. A couple of things to note. So again, there's no steps here, I'm just noting things. First, as this transition happens, JMC will provide training to walk you through new MCCC process as always. Then on the schedules course edit course data screen, a new to MCC tab will be inserted to the MCC fields will be maintained here. So we're saying, you know, an update will come out. You'll say, oh, MCCC is listed there. And the MCCC fields will be taken from where they were previously to the MCCC area here. So I think there were a lot of them were the state specific course code there and we're bringing them to this new tab. So the thing to note here is that you're not losing any data. Nothing's going to be absent or anything like that. It's under that new MCCC tab. And I'm, I'm not sure if my current database has that or not, but we will check and see. So I'm going to go to schedules, course, edit course data. Oh, I do have it there. So there's these new MCC. So some of the state specific items are gone. So if you came here, you'd be like, oh, where is all my MCCC data? It's now on this MCCC um, tab to make sure that it's cleaner, looks better and a more succinct area there as well. So we're just prepping you for that. You don't even need to do anything because the data will uh, is carried over there for you. So. Any, I don't think that anybody probably has any questions about that because we're not, and I think that, yeah, if people have questions about MCCC, we can t talk about that when we get to the MDD, MDE part. Um, but I know our programmers are working on that transition to EdFi. Minnesota Digital Equity. Digital Equity Entry in the JMC Family. Now we recommend you get as many families to do online registration so that they can fill out their digital equity information online. Um, totally up to you. You can do it in the JMC office as well, but it's easier for you. And it kind of puts the power in the family's hands. And those that don't have a computer at home or internet at home would have to come to the school. But it's another great way to know who might need some extra um, digital equity. So digital equity was a new data collection started during COVID in 2020. 
This year, schools are continuing to collect this information from families. JMC provides this data collection option through JMC Family. To enter digital equity information online, log into the JMC Family portal and navigate to register for 2122. This is what your families would do. Click the digital equity questionnaire link to follow the steps to submit your students' digital equity information. MDE and JMC are helping school districts collect and use their data on broadband speed and availability to better target initiatives to help get access to those who need it. This year, that internet access information is being collected through JMC Family during the online registration process. Helpful tip, your student's name will be listed right here. Step, the, the step two is just simply to come in here and select their internet performance from the drop-down list provided. It's really easy to do. If a student has more than one primary contact, each of those primary contacts would complete the digital equity questionnaire. This allows, actually it's MDE, sorry about that, to track students' internet access needs if they live in a multiple households. So click the next button to uh, submit the student's digital equity information. If you have more than one student in the school, you'll automatically be taken to the digital equity questionnaire for your next student. Then we have digital equity validations. So in the digital equity tracking is only a year old in Minnesota. So schools and families are still kind of working out the data collection. JMC is always looking for ways to keep your data as error free as possible. So we added a new validation when entering digital equity data. To see this new validation, head to the view student data screen. Step one, select the student by entering their name in the find field. The purpose of digital equity record is to record the internet access the student has, has. So you'll click step two, come in here, click the digital equity tab. Step three, click the add survey response button. Step four, click the edit button right here. Now a helpful tip is that they must have a primary contact. So if you put a kid in right away, you can't edge in a digital equity record until they have a primary contact because the household contact is listed with the student. Step five, select the digital equity information using the appropriate dropdown list. Now here's a helpful tip. In this particular record, the internet access and residence response of no, not affordable, okay, does not coincide with these other answers, like internet performance, yes, and what's a Chromebook, right? So a warning will pop up when the record is updated. So I'm gonna click the, if, I'm gonna click the update button here, and if it was correct, it would just save, but it's not. So you're gonna get this pop-up that says, if the answer to the first question is no, do not answer second and third questions. I mean, if, if you have no internet access, you can't have internet performance and internet access type. The pop-up will alert you to an incorrect answer combination and also give you guidance as to the correct corrective action to make this record reportable. So I'm just gonna take a quick look at the office side of it because the office and the, and the um, and the JMC family are, are the same. Um, you come here to view student data, it, the record, the, the fields are the same. I come here to gig, digital equity and I can come in, look, I don't have a contact for this student so it's not gonna let me do that. Great, there we go. Here's Victoria. I've actually got one in there already. So let's just come in, add a survey response, edit it right here and just fill out those fields right there. Now, if they have more than one primary contact, it will let you choose the primary contact you're attaching it to. But they'd simply come in here and say, Yep, we've got it uh, yes here, and it's provided dial up, and then they go right on down the list and edit those, and then click update. All there is to it. So, oh, and there it is. There's an, an answer there. It won't let you fill them out there without doing all those information there. But this is so straightforward and so easy to do, especially for families. Um, it just is more of a time issue. Can you get your families to do it? If not, how can you put that information in JMC office? So, any questions about digital equity? No problem. We've got a helpful tip here. Jody adds that for their 999 students, Joe at JMC told them to enter a zero in the field next to the 999, and that prevents those numbers from being wiped out when calculating attendance in their elementary building. It's super helpful. Absolutely. Yep. So that's what I was saying that if you did want to run your calculated attendance here, right, and you do have a 999 here, okay, by putting that zero in that minutes per day, that will prevent it from wiping that out. Absolutely. Great. That's it, Paul. Great. Yeah, digital equity, very straightforward. Um, it's a matter of just getting the families to fill it out or the office to fill that out as well. All right, 21st century learning fields. Two new fields have been added to 21st century learning for the 21-22 school year. Head to the view student data and click the program history tab to view the 21st century learning uh, program history records new ones. So this is, this is in relation a little bit to EdFi because EdFi has the program history record. So we wanna let you know that when you have this program history record for 21st century, there are two new fields. Those two fields are this, the attendance days. You'll enter the number of days the student has attended 21st century learning in the attendance day fields. And step two, enter the number of hours the student attended 21st century learning in the attendance hours field. This, is, this one's really easy in there. 
actually, I don't even necessarily need to take a live look because it's so straightforward here. So I'll just keep it on here because I want again, I want to respect people's time. Um, what, if you have a program history record that's created via EdFi uh, and it's a 21st century learning one, or you are entering it manually, you just need to know that these are two new fields. Before you were just entering that they were a 21st century learner grant. Now we need to track their days and hours. Really straightforward. I, if I, I can't imagine anybody's gonna have questions about that. So I'm gonna keep on rolling. So special ed history import and data element edition. The import program history and special education history. So here's, here's what we need to know. So program history and special education history are new terms for our Minnesota schools. The program and special education history records are the student Mars records that are submitted for EdFi reporting. So if you've never done EdFi before, you're like, well, what is this talking about? You really, you can, I'm just introducing the idea here to you. If you've not done it, you don't need to worry about this. We'll go through this process when we're doing your EdFi transition. But I want to let you know about a few things. First, you'll work with these records in a similar way as to how you worked with Mars status records. But you first, you need to import the records for all your students at one time. But you would only do this once you've started the EdFi process. You go to Minnesota. Minnesota program and special education history import program and special education history to import program and special education history here. And again, we go through this in the EdFi. I'm just alerting you that this is happening. So when you hear these terms, special education and program history, you're like, oh, James, he's got this figured out. We've got this. We're ready to go. So what you'll do is, uh, uh, again, this is part of the EdFi process. You'll enter 6121 in the, the begin date here. You'll leave all the record types checked. Again, I'm just introducing this to you. Uh, you don't need to enter in an end date and you'll click the import button to import your special education history data. Really easy to do. Then what happens is it will show you an import summary report here. You can review that and that's when you'll edit the individual records. Again, just introducing it to you. You don't need to do anything with this until you start the EdFi transition. The same as with the special education history data element edition here. So what we're telling you is that yes, you're going to import these data items here, and there are some new data elements. During the Minnesota EdFi Start Your Process, schools will import history and special education program history records from the Mars to EdFi. This adds a special education history record for the students who had Mars special education records. So again, we walk you through all this so you don't need to worry about it. What you will do, will do is you'll head to the View Student Data screen and click the Special Ed History tab to view the student's special education history. Here you'll be able to view and edit the student's special education history record. A new placing local education agency data element is to be maintained for the 21-22 school year. So this record will be created for you. You'll do it, but there's a new record or new data element for the special education history. So, and again, if people have questions, you can type them in now. I don't need to go there and create that new record there as well, but it's in that new special ed history tab. The spe special ed history is new with EdFi as well. So we're just alerting you that the record is listed here and that that is a new item that will be listed there for you. You'll have to choose that placing local education agency. It's really easy to do. Any questions about that, Brett? Uh, no, Paul. Great. And then setting legal names. For the vast majority of students in your database, their legal name and commonly used names are identical. However, if a student goes by a nickname or a shortened version of their legal name, you can now put their legal name in the different field to satisfy state reporting needs. Fun fact, this is important. Prior to beginning this process with JMC, contact the MDE, Minnesota Department of Education, to make the change on the DE side. Entering, JMC entering the JMC steps before notifying the Department of Education will result in an error message. So after you've gone to uh, complete the name change with the Minnesota Department of Education, follow the steps below to add a legal name to the student. Step one, enter the name in the find field. Step two, click the sensitive tab to edit the student's legal name. Step three, you need to enter their legal last name, first name, and middle name. And if they have a suffix, you can enter that as well, but that needs to be entered in the appropriate fields to designate a legal name for the student. Then the legal names are entered in those fields to correspond with the legal names of the Minnesota Department of Ed site. Step four, click either of the save buttons to save those changes. Now, a few fun facts. The name entered in the student demographic data up here will appear on all JMC portals. Entering a legal name in the sensitive tab fields overrides the preferred name found in the student demographic area for all state reporting purposes. So that's a, it's a really cool tool. Um, we started last year, but we had the finishing touches this year. So I go to view student data. And Do uh, America Doyle is the kid and the student's like, um, I don't want it to be America Doyle. Uh, I want it to be Americana Doyle. Okay. You'd come in here to the sensitive tab and say, all right, last name, Doyle, first name, America, 
and I, I don't have a legal middle name, but I could copy it in there. Okay. And then I put in here, the first name is Americana. There we go. And now I'll save that record. What that's going to do is it's going to save this as America Doyle and this Americana Doyle. So when you, when teachers are taking attendance or anything like that, they'll see Americana Doyle. But when this information is reported to the state, it will say America Doyle. So great new feature. Uh, it's not just for students who have different chosen preferred names, but you know, we have some schools where a lot of kids have the same name, Tom Smith, right? Um, or Jesus Morales or whatever it might be. If you have three or four kids with the same name, put their nickname up here, right? That way when teachers are calling out attendance and like that, they don't have to constantly know like which student it is. So I like that feature. Any questions about that one, Brett? Uh, I got a couple here. Um, one says they don't see the tab that says program history. Should they do it? You will not see that until you start and go through the Minnesota Ed5 uh, pro process. So you, that that tab will be created once you are are knee deep in the Ed5 transition. So you won't see that until you're you're fully in the Ed5 transition. Even schools that are doing Ed5 this year might not see it yet uh, until they start the Ed5 transition pro or continue the Ed5 process. Great question. Okay, Paul. Uh, upon clicking the above, the serving school drop down is blacked out. Yep, you can't you can't use it yet. You got to wait until we continue that Ed Five transition process because most likely that uh, I'm actually just taking a shot in the dark here. But part of the Ed Five transition process is, is downloading uh, information from the MDE, uh, local agencies and schools and things like that as well. So wait till you get well into the Ed Five transition process before you would start to do that. So and I, it's always a little I get a little nervous telling people what's coming because they want to do it right now. But just for that, just wait till you go through the process of the Ed Five transition. Or if you've already done Ed Five transition, wait till you're into the Ed Five uh, process this year after you've created your Mars A and B files, and then you'll all those fields will be populated correctly. Great, Paul. That's it. Great. Well, MDE folks, first of all, thank you for adding all of your 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 thoughts already. And I'm sorry that we're running a little late, but we want to turn it over to our MDE folks. Um, for folks to be able to either just take over or talk or let me know if I can run the screen. We have Gyra and Tara and Jean and Marilyn and Jeff and Karen. I think they're all here. If they're not, let me know. But they were each going to take a little time um, to explain some things and we can take as long as we need because this is, you know, got a lot of people that on this this webinar and a lot of people are going to watch it to, to see how to do their Minnesota State reporting. So do you folks have a, a, a list in which you want to or an order or do you want me to just ask somebody to go first? Well, hey, thank you so much. This is Tara Chapa, um, obviously Department of Education. I think we do have all the people you spoke still on the call with us. Um, just to respect everybody's time, maybe it would just be best if I showed the upcoming training dates that we have for all the various topics related to EdFi. Yeah. And then um, people could just ask questions if that's okay. Unless any of my colleagues, Karen, Jeff, Marilyn, Gaira, Jeannie, have anything they want to add before we open it up to questions and answers. I would so, like to add about the certification. I perfect. Mean, the data. Perfect. Go ahead, Marilyn. Before you do that, um, Paul, can I share my screen so I can show the slide yep. that I have? Yeah, okay, just, I will I do that. I'll stop share. Yep. Okay, you go right ahead, Marilyn. I don't have any slides. So two things I want to cover. First of all, we're working on the documentation for the upcoming changes for the 21-22 school year. There's very few, so there's not a lot. A lot of them probably won't even affect you. So be sending out an email once that's up and posted to the website. And now I want to go into for the districts that are doing EdFi and AB files, so they're dual reporting. If you think, based on your comparison report that you're running, that you are ready to have MDE verify your data, we don't certify the data. We can verify it to see if it looks correct. If you want to do that, you can go ahead and send an email to the Mars email address giving me your, your district name, district number, and put in your software because there'll be other softwares doing the same thing, letting me know you're ready to do, uh, or let us verify the data. And then what we have to do is we have to go through a process here. You know, it's, it's kind of cumbersome. It takes a little bit of time, but I'd rather go through this, you know, taking the time than not having data match. So I just wanted to give you a heads up on that whenever you're ready you can definitely go ahead and um, send that email. And then we'll go you know, through the process and we'll get it going. 
Thank you. Thank you. That was Marilyn. Is that right, Marilyn? Yes. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. I make sure. And you know, Marilyn, I, we always tell folks too, like you, when it comes to the Ed Five process, people are, are nervous. We say you just gotta follow the directions. We it's our third year of, of laying out instructions, and if you follow the directions, you can you know you 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 can do it, folks. Get your Mars done first. It's not that hard. Just it just takes a little bit of time. And just don't when when you hear Mars is going away, the Mars West is going away. That's not correct. That is going to be years down the line until we get EdFi to edit the data like we do in Mars. So don't panic. Mars isn't going away tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, great. Thank you, Marilyn. It's a great comment. And, and, and just as JMC said, no, it's it's not going away. Just the, the submission, the way of submitting your Mars data is changing. Um, so in front of you, I think, uh, JMC, can you see? Yeah. I know oh, yeah. I don't have it in presentation yep. mode. And August, it's, August 24th, August 25th, yeah. 26th. Yeah, we're right yeah, there. Yeah, lots, right lots of training coming up. So yeah. just out of respect for everybody's time, all of these links to register for any of these trainings, any or all, whatever you feel is sufficient, um, is on the MDE public posted calendar. In addition to that, um, I'll just do a quick announcement and then I'll open it up for Jeannie for PSEO, for Jeff from Digital Equity, um, Karen Millette from MCCC, Gaira, um, our school finance supervisor, and anybody else that wants to state anything could do that at that time. But the only other thing I wanted to mention is, and, and we're pretty excited about this, um, is coming soon, just as JMC has these fantastic videos posted on YouTube on how to set things up for all things related to EdFi, we are also doing something similar to that. It will be um, under the data submissions part of the MDE website and you go to EdFi, um, there will be a tab and I think it's there now. It's titled um, Data and EdFi or How to Data and EdFi. I don't have it up in front of me, I apologize. Um, and under that tab will be a library of short videos of how to sync your data, how to work through a key and secret process, and soon um, some of this comparison of your data and how to align things between Mars and EdFi. Um, so that is coming throughout this school year. It's not going to be 24 hours and it's ready to go tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. live. So if you go there and you don't see it over the next few weeks, just note that it's coming and keep checking back. But that will be um, a viable resource for all of our districts to utilize in setting up EdFi. Training standpoint, you know, I didn't know anything about EdFi two years ago, <laughs> and but I just follow the directions, right? I learn from others. I we we those I'm sure those videos you're going to have are great. You just you know sit down and you close your door and you follow the steps and then you're good to go. So when people say to me, I don't know anything about EdFi, it's, you know, I'm nervous about. It. I always tell people yeah, that's the wrong attitude to bring. The attitude that we want you to bring is, hey, all the resources I need to be successful in EdFi, the MDE has them and JMC has them, and when that time comes. I'm going to knock it out of the park. Like yeah. that, that's, that's the attitude I want people to bring because we actually last year on our first EdFi transition, it was like October. We had somebody that went through it and they did the whole process in two days. Now, sure. Mm -hmm. They're kind of superstars, right? But they brought the right attitude, which is like, I'm just going to buckle down and do it. So just know people know that, Hey, a lot of schools have done this before you. You're not the first, right? You'll mm -hmm. do it and just follow the directions. You'll be good to go. We all want to support you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Do any of my colleagues want to add anything? Karen, Jeff, um, Jeannie, anybody else want to chime in and, and add any any pieces of information for their programs to be collected in EdFi? I do for if this is Karen, if I can go ahead. Please, absolutely, Karen. All righty. I'm going to steal the screen for just a second, if you would mind. I will stop sharing. And Karen, I would say anybody, I know that we, you know, we want to respect people's time, but we're also going to post this on YouTube tonight. So if somebody has to sign off, right? Um, if, if Karen or Jeff or Jeannie or Guy, if you have anything to add, please do add it um, at this time because a lot of people are going to watch this. So I know I, I apologize that we're going over, but too many great questions. So please keep adding your stuff. <laughs> All right. Um, just real quick, the um, 2021 data submission is what's currently going on. Last year's data is what's being collected. Real quick, here's a snapshot of the date of information of when is the due dates are, when's opening, when's closing, and then take a look at for next school year also. 
I want to post this here, but please note that when you log on to MCCC, there is a message board and this information is always posted up to date with this information at that same place. So when you log on into MCCC or on the documents page, this information is always put there and any other special notes that you need to reference. The next thing that I wanted to do is there is a training coming up in October and it is about the focus for what to do with your 21-22 data and how to prepare for Ed5, which will be going live 22-23, how to get yourself set up and in that direction. And with that, very much um, what uh, Paul had just stated, that where the data is being entered is going to not only stay in the state specific, but then also add that MCCC. Paul, there was information for MCC on both those pages. It didn't all move. So I, I'm learning too, right? So I appreciate yeah, that. You, yeah, it, it, you went through that at light speed, but I'm like, yeah. nope, the state course code was still back on the state specific. So just FYI. Yep. So it, it looks like there's some information there and then the addition of those other places. But what's really good is we've got a great group at KMS that is going to be our pilot school this year. And with that, they're going to help work out all of the bumps and everything that um, uh, with just the uh, MCCC information. So when we get there, we're gonna have more information to be able to do better training with that. And then last year, the, the last thing I really wanna do, and this is gonna be the talk again for this coming school year and moving forward, with MCCC going ed fi, this is no longer about creating files and file uploads. This is no longer about entering the calendar in MCCC. That's gone away. That's definitely moving away. The EdFi system is going to have some things that you have to do and some um, alignments that have to get made inside of JMC. So what you have to understand is who is going to be assigned doing Minnesota Common Course Catalog. And number one, a person who has a strong understanding of the content of the courses and how they're taught. You have to, we cannot just add a state course code. It has to be the correct state course code. For example, something called linear algebra is not linear equations. So linear algebra is an advanced past calculus talking about matrices, vertices, about that's linear algebra. Linear equations is algebra one. So it's, it's really understanding the content and getting the correct state courses, uh, the code information added to it, along with how is that being taught? We cannot just leave the method of instruction to be classroom. We now have a much bigger plethora of online, blended hybrid, and a lot of other things that are going to continue to go on from this point forward. So those have always been there. We need to make sure that that's getting entered correctly. Minute of instructions. Well, um, some of it might get calculated out for you. You really have to understand how that's getting entered and how that's getting put into courses, especially elementary, because you set up an elementary either for a whole morning or afternoon, but MCCC wants to know how much time is art getting and how much time is English language arts getting. So those are going to be very much detail of how to use JMC to get that information to us. Second, somebody who has strong skills with the course scheduling, course grading, all of that portion, and not only that, the authorization to do those components. So just being strong in Mars does not mean you're going to be strong in the, school, the, the course scheduling. This is a very different part of the, that software, including the grading. And so please note that, that you need to have somebody, you cannot just throw anyone at this because it's no longer about the file uploads. We're pushing it back to the actual content and what it is you're submitting us about courses. The last thing to do is also reviewing your course classifications to make sure that the content is matching your content, not just by title. And then the last thing I wanna really highlight again is that the direct pay PSEO is collected and reported to MCCC. Direct pay PSEO is college courses by contract. 
your district is in contract with the college or another school to pay for PSEO courses that your students are taking. Please note, I did not say anything about how this was being taught, whether it was online or not online. That's not what the, you're going to enter that as information. This is PSEO and the students can be in your building because they're doing it online. They could be at the college, they could be at their home. It's not their location. It's that it's a college course being taught by the college and paid for by your district. That information will be reported to MCCC on a course by course basis, not a generic PSEO course. Please note the PSEO traditional information, the colleges are entering that course detail for those students that are getting that information that you send them and they're enrolled at the colleges. This information is not getting collected and it needs to be put into MCCC worth specific. That was real fast. See me at the training. You'll see that on the calendar. Uh, you can sign up for that. Thanks, bye. I'm done sharing. Thanks so much, Karen. Appreciate it. I'm, I'll let her stop sharing, but I'll open it up for um, Jeff or anybody else that wants to add a couple things before I go over just a few things. Okay. Um, I see there's a couple questions in the chat screen. I'm going to show just a few, I think there are two or three slides. Um, and I'm, I'm basing the slides that I'm showing off of, um, I guess, the most frequently asked questions that, that I see come in from districts. But first of all, can you guys hear me? <laughs> I'm always concerned that I'm, I'm talking on a tangent and then um, my, my mic isn't working. So coming James, in loud and clear. Loud and clear. Thank you so much. I can't see your screen, Chair, just so you know. Okay, that's okay. I'm working on that. All right, can you see my screen now? All's good. Okay. So I just want to go over a couple of things and I'm sure that all the districts on have heard this before, but being that this is going to be posted publicly, um, this may be beneficial. Um, and I know that I'm showing not in presentation mode, but this will help me because I'm not going through all the slides, just be able to, to select a few slides I feel are beneficial. So with that being said, one of the biggest issues that I think we see um, at MDE for districts that are having trouble in setting up initially the syncing of their data, and they are a few things. One, the correct environment for their key and secret. And what I mean by that is if you're a new district, um, just setting up the EDFI API, you would set up in staging. And then you would have a key and secret set up in staging to match that. And because um, we've rolled out EdFi in two different stages, we have a staging phase to sync your data and then to set up your key and secret. And we have a production phase to sync your data and set up your key and secret. One of the biggest challenges we have in districts essentially um, setting up their ability to sync data is they will initiate or generate a key and secret in production for ESCT and utilize the staging API. Those are two different environments. So when you try to do that, the I'm, I'm, I'm going to speak from my non-technical side here, the wires get crossed, if you will, and it won't, it, it's it, unsuccessful in syncing. So when you are beginning in staging, it's very crucial that you are using the ESCT staging link that basically comes from MDE. It's been sent out multiple times via email. Um, it's listed in a lot of our documentation and presentations, but it's essential that you use that separate staging key and secret um, link and you pair that up with your staging API. And then JMC is fantastic about listing the instructions and videos on how to map all of your preferences in your software to then sync that data via EdFi. That, are the, that is the essential and successful steps for staging and the same thing for production. And the key and secret tool, the ESCT tool for production lives in your EDIUM profile. So that you do not need from us. You just need to get access to ESCT from your Iowa. These are the questions we receive quite frequently. So just pay careful attention 
that when you're setting up for staging, you're utilizing the ESCT staging link with the staging API. When you're setting up for production, you're using the ESCT production link, which is in your EDIUM profile, paired with your production API. Those are, those are key pieces of information that help you be successful in your efforts. This is reiterated on this slide. So making sure that you're using the correct key in secret with the correct API, you're utilizing your instructions from your vendor, and then you're actually syncing your data. The other question we receive is when I'm in staging, when can I move to production? Staging should be the, the environment in which you are in for the um, shortest amount of time. So you should be able to successfully sync your data. You should know how to get into your EDVP and run a few reports, and you should know how to get to your comparison report. You could probably do that if you're a super user in a week or a couple days. Some take longer and that's fine, but it should be the shortest amount of time that you are in any environment. So staging is, is essentially those three checklist items. And then you go back into your JMC software and you generate a key and secret for production and you put in the API for production and then you're syncing into production all of next school year. So I wanted to quick state those two things. I, I did show the slide on all the various um, webinars coming up. And I wanted to also list when I spoke about the data how to videos, this is a screen example of where you can find those. So when you go to data submissions, just as you do now for Mars, um, you can find EdFi on the left hand side alphabetically and all the various tabs um, as it relates to EdFi. And the second from the top is the data how to videos. This is where we will house our library of EdFi how to videos. Right now, they'll probably be specific to setting up your syncing. We will move into data comparisons. We will probably move further down the road into um, early education, digital equity, MCCC, um, just to make it easier for our districts. So I'm going to leave this slide up and then can facilitate questions, but I would ask that maybe JMC could say those questions out loud if we have them, and then I would be happy in pairing with my colleagues and answering those. I've got one here for you. Um, right. Just a person, uh, Jody, who's the Mars coordinator and JMC administrator and elementary sec secretary for the district. She currently works quite a bit in doing this transition, just wondering how much time is the transition from Mars to EdFi going to take? That's a million dollar question probably. <laughs> right, it's a question we receive a lot. And I wished I had a blanket statement for that and I don't because it really depends on the size of the district, how many programs you have. If you're a super user, right? If you're technically gifted, um, this can be, it could be two weeks and you're sinking to staging and you're you're onboarded to EdFi then, and you're just kind of doing going through your comparisons of your EdFi, your Mars data coming in with EdFi and Mars throughout the Mars collection cycles. So it could be anywhere from a week to two weeks in getting to production. Um, to we've seen districts take a month to three months to getting over to production. Um, that varies in your timing, how much time you have available to dedicate to this, as well as your understanding of your data and the technical pieces involved. But if you're thinking of how long it takes to do dual submission before you get off of dual submission and report EDFI only, as Marilyn said, um, that is really up to the district to initiate um, by looking at their comparison report, gosh, my data is really lining up. I feel good about this. I think I'm going to see if MDE can verify some of my data for fall. And then once you receive the go ahead for that, that things look good, you would do the same for end of year. And once you receive the go ahead for that, then you could move to a certification to report via EdFi only the following school year. So it's not a blanket statement answer. It's, it's kind of descriptive and I apologize, but I hope it provides you some clarity. Thank you. Um, There's just one question about student information is entered in Mars. Do we have to rerun the import in EdFi? Well, that's a tricky 
question. Um, I'm going to give my best answer. And if Marilyn wants to chime in, she sure can. But I, I think if I'm understanding it, it is, do we have to submit our MARS data via the AB files as well as EDFI? And my answer there is yes. You would upload your AB files as you normally do according to the MARS submission cycle, but you would also then go over to JMC and sync your MARS data via EDFI. So that's that answer. But as far as running your edits in Mars West, that will only happen when you're in production. And that too um, would probably be about the same timing when you're submitting your AB files or right before you're submitting your AB files, as well as before you're syncing your EDFI data. But I believe JMC has it very well documented on how to carry out this process. Every time you make a, a change to a student, not every time, right? Because you can do it on a regular basis. You would say like every two weeks, I'm gonna create my Mars A and B files and then upload them till they're air free and then do the, the EDFI transition or what's once a month or whatever it might be. So every time you change student data, do you need to create a new Mars file? No, just like before you wouldn't, but you wanna keep regularly doing that so that you can be catching errors and things like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Once you do it a couple of times, I think I could, I don't want to speak for all districts because I know it can be challenging, but once you get in the process of doing this, um, it does become second nature. No more questions. Okay. I think that's it for us. I will stop sharing and um, and, and chime out. Thank you, everybody, for, for listening to us. Thank you, JMC, for inviting us. It's much appreciated. Well, we appreciate your time. And, and Tara, did, did Jeannie or Jeff or Guy want to say anything, or are we good to go there? Yeah, I'll open it up for them again. I think that they're, they sound like they're ready to, to be done, huh? To be done, they're, sounds like. They're off. They oh. left the, the presentation. Oh, Did gotcha. OK, well, let me bring up my presentation here again and then. OK, well, hey, thank you, JMC oh, districts, thank and you. thank you, JMC. Thank you so much for being here. We really, 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 really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks to my colleagues for, for joining me to appreciate everybody. Absolutely. And I'll just wrap it up here in just a second here. Let me just get to my final slide here. All right, yeah, that's it. Thanks everybody. Special thanks to Gyra, Tara, Jeannie, uh, Marilyn, Jeff, and Karen uh, for joining us uh, in your busy days and helping us to get people's questions answered. Thank you to all the JMC member districts. Thanks to Brett Joyce, my, my partner here and getting this great presentation off the ground. So I will get this um, edited and, and posted to YouTube probably in the next couple of days and sent out to folks. So thanks everybody and thanks for choosing JMC.